Well, or you probably uh, already know my answer. You probably have a million things going on. not that much different on, than Jared and I. I just wrote yeah. that uh, ARPA agreement with GC County. So, yeah, we can, nice whenever you get to it. Whenever you get to it. Why we're in conservative? Just, I, mean, I just wanted something together. Well, that's my guess. I plan on yeah. in two weeks, if not actually a month out. So if it's that's not for the individual. You won't get too right, but I know, I know, you know what I mean. I just yeah. still, I knew it was going to come up. Yes, true. From there, okay. Um, Garrett, check your email. Okay. Garrett, yeah. you don't drive that car very far, do you? Right, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, How am I supposed to? Okay, hold on. How am I supposed to do two? Sorry, that's not That is not going to work. I can't do both. I'm just going to get rid of it. Honor donuts. I don't know. Just honor donuts. <laughs> You've had a you've had a busy June, haven't you? I have another car. I, I have. A I was I was uh, fresh air exercise. The lake. It was actually better than they posted online. Was it? Yeah. Not quite like as low as. Do that. No at all. So that there's less people down there. <laughs> it didn't help. Don't go. Don't go. It's terrible. Awesome. Fuel prices help if you go down Lakeways, yeah, then uh, get rid of people. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, double the fuel yeah. price. I can't see imagine money. what they are there at the marina. So they just eight crazy. bucks. Seven six. Is that for premium though? Hmm? For premium? No, they don't even carry premium there anymore. Really? That's just like it's just regular old gas. Jeez. I'm sure it's Maverick since he. Owns part of it. So I'm like, okay, just to test it. Just have a healthier lifestyle to manage. So the HIV is a little bit. Oh, God. Sorry. There's no sorry. That's from the. You will be sorry. Oh, my God. Whoa. Are you going blonde or <laughs> what, what color are we? Just kind of lower energy. Blonde bomb. <laughs> talk, talk to me about that. I, I'm interested. <laughs> Ever since they put that thing across her, she started coloring her hair and doing weird things. What? <laughs> Over there, Jay's. He's got a pole in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. We're not recording yet, are we? <laughs> That's Is Robert coming? As far as I know, I haven't heard of these songs, so it was just hopefully, yes. Alrighty. Do we start or do we wait? Or I'm what do you surprised want to Dan Belinsky got that many people with only three signs in the whole county. <laughs> I looked at it. <laughs> I only I'm saw like three down. signs. I have, a, I have a bit down the mountain. There was a few in Mountain Green and Robert oh. Peterson. Still up? I don't know. I think so. When I was out looking, they were still up. I've been looking well, for mine. And I don't know where all mine are because everybody else. They're on the they have to be mountaintops. Out by the mountain are they? Following. Do they? A few of them are. Otherwise, <laughs> it was a holiday. A <laughs> few of them were. Like it's in law, and you get the next day. Like, how the heck did he get up there? You need to pay your taxes. So Just for that tax. Where were they at? Yeah. Along. That public hearing that we have, that's for the public I mean, Morgan Valley Drive on that side. I just yeah. heard that yeah. document that was supposed to be Unless you well, think well, right. it was in the pipeline. Morgan Long, let us know. Please let us know and we'll come pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> it was because a, I don't it was know where they are. I left town, so uh -huh. I'm just getting back. So. so was this now or was this during the work? Oh, okay. So this, go ahead and... Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start. I, I haven't heard from Robert, but... So this is the official results. I finished it up today. 
Um, any questions as we look through? No ties this time? That was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan got more votes that came in later? Is that what happened? Yes. I just finished up today with the provisionals that we did on election day. And the ones that did come through the mail that I could still use the dates down on it. It was the 27th, so... Was the goal 1800, Blaine? Didn't quite get there? No, I didn't quite get there. No problem. It was. <laughs> <laughs> so the over, over votes and under votes, what, were that? what was that? Um, I can... I know you don't it have it here, but just kind of... Brush demonstration here. No, that one's, As you can that see, these are the under votes. I thought that was going to be a little bit of a goal. Off. They've only voted for two. Which one? Okay, right. Over votes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They voted for multiple. Oh, okay, I understand. I think we're going to pretty so hard out of And this is uh, what's the intent up. of the voter. And me, I would go with Andrew Badger because he crossed it out. Say I'd go with Becky Edwards because he crossed it out and go with Blaine because he crossed it out. Okay, and, so the, and this is the undervote? Undervote voter intent. Oh, voter intent. So what was the overvote? Again? Um, overvote is that. Oh, and I just overvote. Do both of them because they didn't decide. Okay. Yeah. So what was the first one? And this is undervote. Congratulations, Wayne. It's undervoted. <laughs> of the ballots. Oh, undervoted. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. So yeah. after, awesome. after all of the election, we go in and adjudicate yeah. it. And it's the are you off for the next month? It's in New Year. Yeah, it should yes. be, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, today, but wow. should come to the office. I don't think we a way more than I should have. Did wow. we have any Democrat primaries? No. Did we have any Democrats? Because there primaries? wasn't any Democrats running even at the state level, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Do we have any for the fall? Yes. In our county? Not in our county. No, unless somebody with... The treasurer could throw their hat in as a Democrat. He has a as a Democrat. So, so what is the date on that? What's the final you know, date? I'm, let me check on code, and I'll, I will days. email you all tomorrow. So are you going to stay with us and do this again in a couple of years? Heck yeah. This is a challenge. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Good. We, we appreciate all the work. That's it a lot. It's, yeah, it it's, it's a job, let me tell you. It's and we, we appreciate it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a school? There is. So with the school district, my nonpartisan Mountain Green and the fire district, it got brought on to the ballot. So it's automatically going to my November ballot because there's only two voters. And the one in Mountain Green, or excuse me, in Morgan, there was three voters. So it pulled all the nonpartisans on the ballot. So, okay. and so, so that, you'll see the Mountain right. Green, the fire district, er, the Mountain Green Fire District, and the school district number two on this November ballot. Okay. So that means the two that are going to be on the ballot is Kelly and Mindy. You're correct. Okay. For the, for the district, for the school district. School district four. And Morgan. they are not partisan, right? They're not partisan. All right. And so the rest of them are all just like me, basically. Yes. One person. Interesting results for a county school. Boy, I thought Kim and the cousins would have been better. Okay, okay well, so when you got precincts complete, it says 0 to 24. I didn't hear you. 0 to 24, second we got Got precincts complete. Oh, yeah. Zero to 24. There's 24, there's only 17, but with the MC. Morgan County, because I have Morgan County as a precinct also. Okay. Uh, this has even got your blood on it. Um, it's gross. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on. I've blood, sweat, and tears went into this election. <laughs> we should submit that. How did you know that was blood? Well, it might have been fingernail polish. <laughs> <laughs> I was just teasing her that it was her blood, sweat, and tears went into this election. You know? Gross. We were going to send it off to the governor. Like, hey. Ew. She really... Okay. 
We worked hard on this one. I'm so <laughs> <good. laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> But I didn't know if it really was. Was it your finger that polished? It might be. I'm just kidding. What? Do you mean? <laughs> 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 I won't go find another one. I am not How embarrassing. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> oh, you got a paper cut or something? I guess. I got to go home. So, <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> so, so, if you'll bring that in to us, so we'll just yeah. pass it through to the side. So, as far as the sheriff's, you did not count any of that? Correct. I called the lieutenant governor's office and they said do not report it at all. And that's what the same with is on Parson Mountain Green Fire District and the school district. No reporting of it at all. Okay. So, so we didn't even count or anything. So. Okay. Yep. So as far as the total um, voters then that cast a ballot this year was 3219. Correct. Is that correct? Yep. And so what's the difference between that and ballots cast Republican? What does that mean? They're just Republican. Versus and the other. As you can see, the 291 is nonpartisan. Okay. So the 291 and the 2,928 is 3,219 together. Okay. Voter turnout, 44% is all. So what percentage is that? Maybe 30 right around there? Um, it's Not the Republican turnout was 58. Oh, geez, 58. I didn't get down there. It's pretty good. I, That's, that's not actually a bad really good voter pretty turnout. Pretty good turnout yeah, for, for a primary. Yeah, yeah it is. Midterm. I thought. Yeah. My number that I guessed was 5200. So we I typically was, have really high uh, yeah. voter turnout, which is great. So not as high as it should be, but it's yes, high. correct. It's, so did you have any complaints or anything by any uh, people that say, when can we do this back again in physical person? Um, we've, had, we've had both in our office. Mm -hmm. So it goes both ways. They love the by mail, and they hate the by mail. So it's... Did you have any angry ones is what I'd like to know. Yes. We did have, you really? Yes. We or both. both calmed it down. <clears throat> Did they refuse to vote? No. Okay, so they still did vote. Yes. Were they normally as as far as uh, age, older? No. Younger? All ages. Oh, you're kidding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so just a little heads up, I know I came in because I didn't get mine yes. mailed to me, and I did. I was off Thursday and Friday before the Tuesday of, and I got my ballot on Monday when I opened my mailbox. So it could have been maybe four days, four mailing days before, but that's how late that came out, just, and just to let you know. we had two holidays in this election process uh -huh. that really cost us, I think, with the mailing. We can always have those two holidays. We have the 20th, <laughs> the 19th. Yeah, we're going to always have yeah, them. Yeah, we will always will. Yeah. It's never ran the same since Blaine left. Since it's I left? The, the mail's never been the oh, same. Oh, that's right. It never <laughs> <is>. <laughs> I, I can exactly agree with you. <laughs> One, one thing I heard from a voter was be be nice if it was postage prepaid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in 2020, we did do that, so it would be nice, but that's a cost the county's going to take on. And we could look into that. As I say, we ought to probably. For you guys, because I'm not doing it again. Well, it's just the same. <laughs> it's the same to me. I know. We have two drop boxes. I mean, one out front, one. So out we put it in our budget. We tax them, and they pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or I, I, we I agree. That's put a stamp right. on it's just cool. convenience. And we don't pay unless they do mail it. Because just because we send it out as prepaid doesn't mean that it's going to be. So if we send it out prepaid, it probably costs more then. Oh yeah. Because you're prepaying every one, whether they send it back or not. Only if no. they're mailed back. Only right? if they're I mailed think, back. Uh, yeah. They do not get accounted for unless they are mailed back. Uh, so, so you pay postage to mail them and then if they mail them back. 1500 bucks. Um, I, I don't think a lot of other counties prepaid. I think 2600 for a month. So, yeah. $1,500 well, or so would it cost. Yeah. Yeah, it's about that. $1,500. And in reality, if they all send it in, by mail, we would have been paying sixteen hundred and some odd dollars on this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
would probably like it better on bigger elections, like presidential elections every other, or every one presidential elections. And see what the difference is. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Appreciate thank that. you, Cindy. Yeah, thank you for your work on this. Take your blood away. I know. I'll grab another painting for her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I was just making a joke about it. All right. Julie. Policy and procedures. A real fun one. Nepotism and fraternization. You just said fun, right? Fun. Mm -hmm. Like it. Lots of fun. Have you guys had a chance to look over that nepotism one? Yep. Shouldn't be too many changes unless you don't like the policy. We've seen this one a couple of times in the past. Yes. Um, so my question is on number nine, and it may be that because they're volunteers, it doesn't make it, they're not employees, but so it says no employee may be involved in any way in an evaluation of a relative for purposes of pay, benefits, promotion, or discipline. Does that not apply to volunteers at the fire department? Because I know there are families where multiple people in the family are volunteers for fire and EMS. I don't this specific. I don't think this it really does. pertains to volunteers. <clears throat> in the exceptions, it talks about volunteers. So section C one C. Well, C1 says an exception to the policy requires a prior written approval of the Human Resources D Director and the County Commission. Exception may be granted only in cases where one or more of the following criteria is met, and then C is the relative is a volunteer as defined by the employing entity. So it does address it. So, so it sounds is like. That good enough, do you think? So. But we'd have to have a written document, I guess, for each of those situations that says that they can be involved given that they're a. Yeah, and and it, if that's the procedure we want to follow, that's fine. I just do. Do yeah. we want that to come to the commission as well, or just to the human resources director? I think until we get things under control, we ought to have to come to the commission. I don't know how many would fit into this, but I don't. I'll I'll take a different. Point of view, not to be contrary, but I don't care <laughs> about. I mean, I think that it's important that it be reviewed by, you know, human resources. But I don't have any particular expertise in that area, and so bringing it to the commission, which is a, ultimately a legislative body, I guess, and I think that's part of our executive function. But to me, I would just prefer the department heads to handle it with with human resources but if you feel strongly about it I'm I'm, I'm just I'd, I don't want I just don't feel like we need that on our agenda right. <laughs> well we could just have Mike's on. I don't mind uh, I don't know if we should discuss it now um, right now I'm just starting to feel like I'm getting a lot of backlash from the public just because I've been out amongst the public as to who we're hiring within the county, different people within the county. And I'm just worried that uh, maybe it's, they don't respect HR yet because they don't know her even though she has our back. I'm just wondering if maybe we ought to start having multiple people uh, have a blanket amount of them that get approved by us. I don't know, we're, only, we're in session two, two times a month. And if we need somebody around and with their by chance following this and maybe you don't know that situation or you don't know the situation maybe somebody else within the commission might i mean matt may know a, a situation that maybe we shouldn't be hiring somebody because he knows that it's relative and we don't i mean just a nepotism or any kind of hiring so i'll, I'll just explain my legislative philosophy okay i only have so many times to irritate the people <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, when you force decisions that are, to me, administrative types of decisions, and I alienate 30% of the public on a discussion that really doesn't matter and probably not going to affect their life at all, then the next time something important comes up that we have to decide and we need to bring public opinion our way, they're going to say, I'm not interested, I don't like them because they did some stupid thing with respect to nothing that matters, you know, two and a half years ago. And so that's why I don't like cluttering up the agenda for legislative things with that type of thing. I, I feel that way about minor land use issues too. It's like, you know, I, I don't need to know what color of carpet people are putting in there. House, I don't, <laughs> and I don't want to irritate, you know, constituents on the basis of things like that. But that's just that's my personal philosophy. It's not a rule or anything like that. It's just the way I feel about it. Well, I, we could think about how we can help to educate the public so they understand why the decisions that are made are made because they're following policy or code or legalities to protect the county. There's certain things we have to be careful about. The, uh, the eight years I was at the county, at Weber County, um, hired multiple people. I think we let go of a couple people. <laughs> um, never once did I bring that process to the commission. And all the commission meetings I attended, I never once saw them bringing HR-related related items. They really kept it within HR and staff. And so I'm not disagreeing, Blaine, that there might be that lack of knowledge, maybe. Um, trust and I don't know what they need to do to get there, but sure. I do know that's that's what I'm used to is not discussing personnel in public meetings. I'm just not used to that. That's I, all. I don't like discussing it either, except for the fact that we've got such a small community here, and I'm just worried about the perception we're giving out there to all the people as to how come nepotism is going on in the assessor's office or whatever office it is. When you when you have one person apply for a job, how can you even, I mean, if they've got an issue with it, why don't they send somebody in to apply? I don't know. Why don't they apply? You know, I, I, I haven't had anybody say anything to me personally. Me either. <clears throat> I think it's important to have good policy in place, and then in situations mm -hmm. like that, if you do have a member of the public that complains to you, I think the simple answer is they were hired according to our policy. And if you'd like to see a copy of our policy, you're welcome to go visit the HR office. They'll show you a copy of that policy. And, and they can go from there. It's not, our, it's not our responsibility to explain to someone why someone was hired by somebody else. That's, that's not, and I don't think we should get mixed up in that, frankly. I and if we we're following to... policy, there is no nepotism. That's right. Correct. There yeah. should and be no nepotism so if we're following the policy. The focus the should be policy is a solid. good policy <laughs> that if correct. followed, there's no nepotism. And that when there's claims of nepotism, we say, well, those are unsubstantiated because you're claiming that there's nepotism here, but you haven't shown how that's nep Like, why do you think that's nepotism? So I can agree with all of that, and I'm okay with that as, as long as we've got the policies set. And, and the one we currently have that you showed us, other than the corrections you made, I think is fine. You're talking the one that is in the front of us. The one that's in front of us, yeah. yes. We need to go through all the others, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is certainly more in-depth than the current uh, policy. Yes. And a lot Much. more clear, I think, which is helpful. So. And the main thing that if the county will remember that nepotism falls into um, place when there's a person who's managing over a person. It, we can hire somebody in a different department as long as they're relative is not managing them. And that's where we have to be careful. And we're, we're doing really well at that. So <clears throat> one question I would ask is, according to your knowledge, if we were to implement this today, um, is there are there any situations that would not comply with the current policy? No. Okay, that's great. C1C. The relative as a volunteer is defined by the employing entity. Isn't the county always the employing entity, or do you mean the department there? I bet it would be. This is Weaver, be Weaver's words, and so I'm C1C, you said? Yeah, exceptions, C1C. The, the relative is a volunteer as defined by the employing entity. Now, I know we have departments. I would think that would be Morgan County 
because we all have different volunteers. Do we have a definition of volunteer? So if it, it could be the county then, as defined by the county. Or, yeah, if we, do we have a place where we've defined volunteer? Well, one thing about Weber with their policies we is they're, to. they're yeah. defined right <laughs> in the front. So. All of the words that they feel like they're supposed to define are right in the front of the policy. But I also will have a master list with all the definitions. So do we have a definition for volunteer currently, or do I we don't think get they've that included added? one here. That's but one I could definitely... There isn't one here, but is there not one in our general policy? I thought there was one. I would imagine, but I, I need to... I thought I remembered one. Yeah. Okay, my question on that, one little bit there, employing a volunteer. Volunteer, to me, is a service thing. It's not a paid position, even though I know the EM, EMS is all volunteer, but they get paid for doing what they're doing. And I know the state, this last legislative session, session was trying to change that name, that wording, from volunteer to something else. And because of that, I'm just wondering if we have that in there. Because we had people at the fairgrounds, or the, you know, this last weekend, they were all volunteering. And they were all relatives, a lot of them. You're going to have that junior livestock show, the fair board, everything. So I'm worried about that one thing, but you're the legal mind on that. Uh, so what do we do there? Maybe we define as paid volunteers or unpaid volunteers. Okay, that'd be fine. For me. And it applies to paid volunteers because that's the only time that nepotism would really matter. Because if you're not being paid, I would almost, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's, I'm like, yeah, don't call me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think that the money is so, where nepotism matters. So this could say the relative is an unpaid volunteer and strike the balance as defined by the employing entity because then it's if that's if that's the distinction that somebody's working at some kind of county venue or function without pay, they're a volunteer. And so we don't mind if they're supervised by someone who's in this family. Yeah, because there's no monetary, there's no optical issue then we don't have to worry about the definition, although we, we probably need to figure out what's the difference between a volunteer and fire and EMS personnel, which we receive a stipend for the shift's work. Um, so the unpaid and the paid volunteer, or do you want complete different words for the two departments? I wouldn't call it a paid volunteer because it's not really pay, it's a stipend, like you say. So I probably ought to be careful of that. But Well, again, this is the <laughs> exception, so we're saying that um, and if the exception is only for unpaid unpaid volunteer, then we can just say unpaid volunteer, yeah. which means that the fire and EMS personnel, which receive a stipend for the shift's work, would be fall under this policy. Right. Yeah. I think I'm a little confused on I that think that's the one. easiest way to do it. So, yeah. see, the relative is a unpaid volunteer, period. And then down in C2A, Board of County Commissioners can just be County Commission. It's County Commission up in C1. Yep. So do a search and replace on Board of County Commissioners and okay. just replace them all with County Commission. Okay. And then at the end of 1C, it says the you want it to, um, as defined by employee Morgan County policy or not? No. No. Just period. Okay. Volunteer no. period. The relative is an unpaid volunteer. Period. Okay. So cut all the rest of it out. Perfect. And then the signature block you have board of struck out already, but I, I think the easiest way to do all of the signature box is just Morgan County Commission. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are the only comments I had on nepotism. Let me look at the other one. So you don't want to go with anything on the first cousin-in-law or any of that kind of stuff? I, I was advised by Emily that if we go too far, we won't have people that we can hire anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just asking. Does Emily know our relation, our, our family tree up here in Morgan? <laughs> Everybody is She's one? She's guessing. <laughs> on the personal relationships, aspect I didn't have any comments to that other than the signature pop. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? 
our comments on that one. Thank you, Robert, for keeping it going. <laughs> Julie, I think for future, and this is just a, this is nitpicking, I apologize, but I know what I've seen also is versus saying Chair Mike Newton, it's just Commission Chair. So it's, if we don't have the titles of the person, then if that person happens to move on or doesn't happen, yeah. then you're still covered in. So I should say Commission Chair? Yeah, it's, yeah I would yeah, just put Commission yeah, just, Chair. Okay. Yep, just Commission Chair. Because if Mike's not around, then Jared needs to sign it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Oh. He'll be around. Yeah. And make sure. All of the signature blocks will be fixed as we incorporate this. I just haven't taken the time to go into all of the ones that we were have done. Uh, but I'll fix that on all of them. And I'm going to add Garrett back in on these to um, the legality. Anything else on personal relationships? Is that pretty clear, you think? I didn't have any further so we comments. Will, we will just need to disclose to you who is um, working in the county, whether we supervise them or not, within yeah. a relative. If there's a pre existing relationship when they come to work here, they should just okay. report it. Um, and then it just goes into, I think, more into detail about in departments themselves. The last one we could do really quickly, if you, um, I went in and I changed what you guys had asked me to do. So if you wanted to look at least at the comp time, which is on page three, you had me change it. It's number nine. And you had me change it to... 10 working days, 80 hours, it shall be the maximum amount of comp compensatory time allowed. And then I, I went down further down and 10 working days of comp compensatory time. So it used to say 30. It but still, says, it still 30. says 30. It still says 30. Yeah, Yours does mine. Yeah, mine. It does right before the 10. On the, the written, second 10. The written Shoot. number is. The one that was sent to you. Mine doesn't. So this is the one I'm going off when I'm fixing it in the system. So nine on mine says 10. So I would make it says it. 10 in both places, yeah. both written and the number. Oh, no, I see what you're saying. I <laughs> On the second, the second one. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sorry. So I have a comment earlier in the payroll practices. Uh -huh. So Roman numeral 3A2. The payroll register will be certified and approved by the county commission or designee. This may be done by electronic means deemed satisfactory to meet Utah statutes. That hasn't I, that hasn't I don't know what that even is, yeah. and I know We've I've never, never approved it. one, so I I, we must have designated, or this is an entirely new policy. This is something that... Is this the current policy? No, this oh. is the policy we were recommended. I had Leslie go through it. She did not catch that. But she's the one that's certifying it, basically, and, and then Cassell sends, you know, make sure it happens. I don't, she doesn't go up to anyone else to certify it. She checks everything. So tell me what a payroll register is. I think that just basically, it's like to check it's out probably of a report that she makes. Probably. Oh, of the, of the amounts that the are amounts. being paid weekly? So and would like, that check edit count as that she went, signature? She goes through that Except that we don't get a check edit. The check Except edit list doesn't it. include payroll. Okay. So it seems to me that it wouldn't be a bad thing for there to be a second set of eyes hit it at least, especially if there's changes. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to see it every time, and I don't want to prove it every time necessarily every yeah, two weeks. I agree. But I would think that especially after, if we make pay adjustments at the first of the year, we probably ought to. Who would that person be then? Do you want it to leave it as is and then uh, her to send it to one of you each week? Or? Oh, I'd say do a, the sign like we do. Yeah, we could do a sign, but maybe not every week again. Like yeah. maybe it could be. Yeah. It sounds like she is our designee and, and that's fine. Yeah. But we can, we can, we don't have to change anything here, I don't think, to in order to do that. I mean, we're not going to, we can't change anything. It's just so that we can monitor it to see what's going on. Which I would like to see. I mean, the truth is, it's our biggest, <laughs> it's biggest, our biggest ditch <laughs> cost, our biggest line item yeah. is payroll. And she goes through, of course, to catch mistakes before it gets sent to Excel. Today she found a few and was able to fix them. So, um, 
Okay, so <laughs> I'm not a big fan of reviewing things about which I know nothing because I feel like my review is meaningless. And one of the things I know nothing about is what people are supposed to be paid per hour around this place. You know, now you could give me the list and I could check it and I could verify it. But if you're asking me to do that every time the payroll register comes up, <laughs> then definitely not right. Well, yeah, no, that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just suggesting like this year we did a across the board pay adjustment. It probably would be Which good we to did have. we did check those at, that we did review. Yeah. We we did the payroll adjustment and then we got a separate sheet with everybody's that adjusted their, salary. That makes sense. Their yearly me. salary adjustment and maybe that's sufficient, I don't know. So what if we were to say maybe the payroll maybe. register will be certified and approved by the the or county clerk or does it with periodic review as required by the county commission. Okay, okay. perfect. And, and then and then if we have a concern and we or have an reason. issue or somebody raises it, then it comes to the county commission Wonderful. for review and approval. Oh, sorry, where was that again? I lost it. I agree. Number it's in it's in three three A two. A two, yeah. Three A two. Okay, So approved by the county clerk. Always put auditor, correct? No. Well, yeah, you would have to put county clerk auditor okay. because she's that's her title. Okay. It's clerk so auditor. Yeah. Or designee if she's out. Mm -hmm. no. Well, oh, well, I don't know how that. Works. I don't know how they do how they do that in the department. I don't know. They, I don't know if they have that in their works. Because um, if she's gone, we don't get paid. Well, so, or designee, so comma doing. with. Periodic review as requested by the county commission. That's right. I like it. Periodic review as needed, did you say? As requested. As requested. That way, if somebody raises an issue with any of us, we can say, let's take a look at it when we bring it up. Roman numeral four. Okay. I think you can strike government. It is the policy of Morgan County to comply with the Fair Labor Standards Act. Oh, yes. okay. And then you, you know, when you're on the next item, on three B one. Are you still on this, this policy? Yeah, procedures. 3B1. You've got Morgan County's payroll poll period starts on Sunday and ends on the second Saturday following it. <laughs> it yeah, is it. not a correct English. No, I didn't make it up. More than happy to fix it. How would you like it? Uh, okay. Probably just remove it. it. Yeah. And the second Saturday following. Right? Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Where's the th um, where's the thirty hours? You're talking the oh. comp time? Yeah, that was in. Oh, that was another one I have. Four nine. Page seventeen of your PDA. Yep. Three hours ago. Oh, there's the 30. Okay. So is is nine is the is the ten working days or eighty hours? Is that on the time side or the time and a half side of the equation? That's on the time and a half. And that, my question is with that. Well, but compensatory time is not time and a half, right? Well, that's well, what it, it is up that's above. That's what it says. In, in 8 above, or not seven eight, 7 above, 7C, seven it says it's at one and a half times, which is overtime rate. I can tell you what we did at the post office. Straight pay. Straight. You got a day off. Weaver does this because they have a huge budget. Yeah. It's one for one. One for one. 
Well, I would think that's what comp time should be. That's right. Well, I was wondering about it. I highlighted it. I assumed that because you would get time and a half wages that you also were required to give them time and a half. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, if it's just a straight trade, I mean, if I'm an employee and I know I want to take a, an extra Thursday, Friday off later in the year, then when they say, do you want to get paid, I'm saying, no, I'll take... I'll take compensatory time mm -hmm. on an equal basis and take those two days. I'll, I'll just work it. Yeah. That's what we were. 7C, is that, it says yeah. compensatory time shall accrue at a rate of one and one half hours for each hour of overtime work. 7C, yeah. But yeah. that is an overtime. Oh, of overtime. If you work overtime. Okay, I mean, so if you were to have worked over. If you work overtime. So is the question. So rather than paying for overtime, you're saying you're getting comp time at one and a half times. Yeah. I guess cost wise, so it doesn't cost. How do we define? It cost do we define all employees as hourly employees or salary? That's the thing is, I don't think this. Will well, it talks about it. exempt employees, doesn't it? And non exempt. Uh, when it talks about overtime, look further. Because exempt employees. Would have, I mean, it's just a one for one. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It says, yeah, yeah time for FSLA non exempt employees. All employees. So all of that applies to non exempt. So hourly salary. Exempt or salary. Yeah, yeah that's why. Because they're exempt from the overtime. That's right. Right. Yeah. So this is. Yeah, because A says no employees entitled compensatory time in lieu of overtime pay. So well, that's because they can't demand it. That's the way I read oh, it. Yeah, they, okay. yeah, they're not entitled to. They can't say I want you know so, because a supervisor may say no, I got to pay you overtime because I'm going to need you in February too, <laughs> and March and April, you know, <laughs> and that's the way employment works. Mm -hmm. um, but but what I'm my my question if we're going to do the one to one and a half, then. 10 working days shall be the maximum amount of compensatory time allowed. So is that 10 at the one and a half side of the equation or 10 at the one side of the equation? That's a good question. So just I guess my thoughts on the private side of this is when you need, when you need employees to work that time, um, if you're a salaried employee, that's one thing you're, you're kind of expected. But when you're an hourly employee, and you're asking them to work extra hours in one week, that's the benefit. I mean, if there's no benefit for them to work extra hours, I'm not sure how many of them would want to. But at the lower rates, um, we say time and a half. Um, of course, it'd have to be worked out in the budget where you'd have to have enough budget for it, but it gives us the ability to, and one example might be our roads department, to be able to have employees work a lot of extra time and if there's a heavy winter and, and they're still willing to put in that extra time versus if the supervisor says, hey, I need you out there and they say, well, you're paying me the same whether I work 40 or 60 hours, so I, I'll, I'll just work my 40. Mm -hmm. So I think I comp, compensatory, there should be something def defined to that. I, I, I don't know how great of a compensation is with the exception of you can put some time in the bank and you can you can use it for vacation or holiday in the future yeah. but but the, what i'm used to seeing on the private side is it's actually time and a half for those that are at a lower wage usually if you're at a higher wage or salary then then you're not included yeah, in this you're not so. included in that well it sounds like when i read the whole thing from the from number 7 on basically we could encourage them to offer comp time at time and a half rather than pay at time and a half for overtime if they choose to take advantage of that. So understanding that, I understand why it would be time and a half because it's in lieu of overtime pay. So the cost is really the same to us. The, the benefit here is that it doesn't burst our budget with overtime pay because they're just being compensated for time, which we would have potentially paid them had they been here. They're just not here. Right? I don't think anyone is utilizing any kind of comp time right now. So that could be a benefit. 
Yeah, I don't think there's anything they have it available to So the other thing we ought to know if, if we're going to have this policy in place is how is that going to be tracked and who's going to track that and what does that look like because I can see it being a bit of a headache to track, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, and I don't know if it would be used a whole lot, to be honest, too. I'm not sure what departments would really even use this besides maybe public works, maybe elections if they're working hard for a week. Yeah, I'm just not sure how many would. runs out of funds to pay overtime. I guess they could do this. Well, they need to, but that's what a budget's about, right? As you see, they should have enough padding in the budget. Yeah, they should be able to say this is my estimate for the year. And if they, I mean, that happens all the time with the UDOT too. You, you, you don't budget for your snow and it's a big snow season and you just got to get through it. Or like in the clerk's office where they're so far behind and they want to get caught up and if they hire people. Yeah, th sorry, to me, this is nothing with being behind and catching up as much as. Here's what happens every year. Every year elections has a week or two weeks where it's a lot of overtime. Every year roads department has to work extra hours at these seasonal times. So to, to me, I guess that's what this is speaking to, something that we need to address. But they've been paying the public works overtime, right? Yeah, if they, if they qualify for it, yeah. Which really only happens during, you know, snowplow season. And it's, even then, it's, it's so if they're minutes. paying them for it, is it needed? No, I mean, all this says is this would be a lieu of it's payment. A, it's an option if we wanted to. Gave them an option. But I guess if the question is, is it, is it worth the option? Is the tracking going to be a mess? Are we going to have people saying, well, but that comp time was supposed to be at time and a half? You know what I mean? And, it, and maybe it's not worth it. Maybe you strike the whole section so we don't have to worry about comp time like that. So I'm leaning a little bit the other way just because we've used it for years on the private side. But it's, it is a big benefit for people. No, I mean and on the time and a half specific. Sure. And when, when you include that time and a half portion, you can actually include it in your payroll. Of, of, and and it'll, they'll track it on the payroll right. side. It should yeah. be tracked fairly easily, I believe. Yeah. But it's just another pay code that we'll need to come over. And yeah. Well, I'll be working with Cassell tomorrow on that too, and that's something I can ask them how it can be done. Then I'm, I'm fine with it the way it is, I guess. So I'm reading nine as applying to the back side of the equation of the one and a half. If, if I'm just reading this section together, is, is that what we mean, or do we are we willing to let them have? 10 working days that turns into 15 working days of comp time. Or I think it would be a key note. So I'm reading days. it as the 80 hours. Because mm -hmm. the, the compensatory time under 7C accrues at one and a half hours. And so it's accruing. So maybe you're only working overtime. Well, that be six days, but now you've got eight days off. Yeah, so we're reading it the same way. I just want to make okay. sure that's what the intent is oh. at the oh, from I the see. commission. It, it, we're, so, so they don't get to take work 10 days of overtime. 10 days of and get 15. Yeah, That'd they, they get a lot of they overtime. Get, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and get 15. They, they work Seven, That's seven the max and a half get. and get ten. Yeah. yeah. I agree with, with the the way it's currently written. Okay. Yeah, percent. The total of eighty hours, so two weeks, five works or ten work days is this the days. maximum amount of yeah. Which compensatory means, time. Whatever. Yeah, I just don't think this is gonna really relate to a whole lot of people. It's probably not. No, we have forty full time people, this is gonna be maybe three or four people. What do we do in the case of comp time if the employee leaves and they've got, say, 80 hours? Are we paying that out? Yeah, that's the thing. I, I think, think you have to. You do have to. I agree I, with that. Actually, you don't. And what about, I know maybe this isn't in this part, but if it's, if it's hours worked, I, I think you have to. But. Well, when I left the post office, or before I left the post office, I had to use up all of my time comp time before I left. So I had to use So they didn't so they didn't have to pay out anything. They That's why not. they said did that so they yeah. didn't have to pay they out. They don't have they do that. And so I think we need to make sure that if somebody's gonna quit, get fired, whatever it might be, or re leave, they need to have that comp time taken care of before they leave. 
if they take vacation for the last week, so be. Yeah, I mean, I, that's effectively what happens, yeah. right? You leave and they continue to pay you until your comp time's over. Right, right. Or maybe they have yeah, to work it on their last day. <laughs> you do have I to pay for hours. Yeah, to yeah, just like you push. Yeah. Proved that I was still there. Hmm. And then I retired. Does this discuss the maximum amount of like vacation and no, that sick leave? That'd be another be, part that's of a the different part of the policy. Yeah. So back on that nine. Um, it says 10 days maximum. Are we, and this is something we had with the post office too, is you had so many, at so much time to use it. I had 12 weeks. And the manager had to give me 12 weeks. They had to get, be able to accommodate my compensation, compensated time within that 12 weeks. If they didn't, then they could they had the option to go and uh, let it go out further, but by policy it was 12 weeks and that was it. So if you didn't use it, you lose it. You lose it. You lost it. Well, this Seriously, is yeah. this is saying you can't go over 80 at any one time. So what you're saying is, is if they do go over 80, and I think the next sentence says it has to be approved. Right. I think he's saying that, that 80 hours had to, would have to, have be, to be used, used within, within a certain period a certain of time. amount of time. So they and could this, just hold this, on this, to it for... Yeah, yeah, they could hold on to it for two or three years, the way it's written now. And I don't think that's right either. The, the purpose is, is you're working an extra time. This is they always told us. You're working extra time now, but we want you to have some time off. Just like you guys have told me, I need to take time off. So that's what you. That's what we need to make sure that they still do take some time off. So this and this doesn't have a set twelve week period. It just says a reasonable right. time. Does it say a reasonable time? Eight. It says they have to use it within a reasonable time, and the department has to allow it within a reasonable time. Okay. But what's reasonable? Should we put within a reasonable time, not to exceed six, six months? months? That's what I was saying. A year. A, a year. year. It's got to be a year. Can't just be six months, but why? Why would it have to? Twelve weeks is not anywhere near. It all depends. It all depends on why you're taking that extra time, and if you're a full-time employee or not, and if you have the time to take the time off. So there's a lot of. And this is what I've seen over the years, but there's just a lot of things that play into it. We actually, on the private side, we we roll it over. We just say you can't go over eighty, but you can definitely roll over. If you've worked those hours and we're asking you to work those hours. I don't think this is going to pertain to more than three or four people, right. and I don't think we're going to break the bank on it. I don't think we're going to say you have to work all these extra hours. I just don't think we're going to see that a whole lot. But so you with that said, not I would, to exceed one year. Yeah, that's so what I would say. say, not to exceed a year. Okay, and so if they accumulated this basically from that time when they've accumulated it one year out. That's why I'm saying you don't necessarily need that a year out. You might need, because if they earn it, one full day in a two-week period of time, they have so much time to take that time off. Now, in, in two months, they earn another day. But yet, if they didn't take that time off, now they've got two of them hooked together, or two full days, whatever it is. You don't want to stretch that out for another year from the last day, because then that first ones are, you know, you can't have a year from the first time or a year from the second time. It's right. got to be from... That's what we talked in that year. I think if you said not to exceed 12 months, then it's going to... Each period earned is going to have its 12-month period, but you can accumulate your first three in the year and take them all at once. Right. Yeah, I'm just... I just think you're going to run into it. Okay. Oh, well, well I don't. I know when it gets bigger and in this county, it's going to be a problem. Well, the, where the problem lies is where we can't get employees. So if we have guys that are working extra hours and we need them to work those extra hours, that's what we're going to yeah. run into. Right. So we're actually helping us. We're begging for them okay. instead of the I'm opposite. Fine with it. <laughs> we're not fine saying that. I just want to let you know that that's what has happened. You've worked in the private. I've worked in the private also besides government. And so that's what it worked. You've worked in a lot of places. I have worked in a lot of places. In 32 years in one, 28 in the other. 
Oh, don't and worry. Ten and the others. So I'm sending you emails All on Sunday together. morning. No. So it's not it's not a very good time. <laughs> Okay, though, I, I've exhausted my changes other than we already talked about updating the signature block. Okay, the only thing is, is we've got to make sure that must the have been the heads heads the nuts. are taking notice of it or keeping track of it, which it says in here. It does say it in here, so we just have to make sure we do that. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So this could be a good topic to bring up in our Monday meeting with the department heads. Um, which, let's see, next Monday, I think it's that. Do you want me to thoroughly read through this or just glance over it? I think, I think the explanation is what I was most interested in having you look through that. Yeah. It's real and red for one of these. You know my point, right? Huh? I think I know where you're at on it. I okay. assume I know where you're at. And okay. maybe I just want to get some thought before we proceed with it. Okay. I'll have Julie send that out to the full commission and then through email we can correspond on it. Did you guys happen to notice the weird thing that was in the packet for 2020. 2020, did you guys see it? Yes. Yeah, I was wondering why that was in there. It should have been. It was a document that Leslie sent to me so that I would know how to put in the election stuff. Can we? I got it. So that was my fault that it was added to the packet. Sorry about that. Tonight. No, it's okay. I'm going to take a quick point. I'll be back before. So now we'll take just a couple minute break before our meeting begins. Just a department move.
I can see it. meeting. It was a pretty light. I can't remember. That's too long ago. <laughs> now let me refresh your memory. <laughs> Christy Johnson. Oscar Gelmont. Yeah, that one was okay. That was pretty close. Yeah. I can't believe only one garbage company submitted a bid for the RFP. Yep. Oh, you didn't have any public hearings or anything. That must have been a short meeting. <laughs> what are you talking about? The last meeting I met. Those are accidents with the hills actually. The last yeah. two years. Yeah. Short. Yeah. Just after yeah. 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 shorter. They're nice. There. Okay, so this is for the whole camera. Well, you're going to think I Yeah. These are going to miss one a lot. And she's highlighted that area. You're going to miss them a lot? Mm-hmm. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. Those that are highlighted are next. The one on the next. This is just traffic stops. You know, I've got a half vacation for a while. I don't believe it. There's a line there, and it just kind of shows you, and that's just the kind of... I actually wish I didn't. So, okay, so if we, can, if we can also, we can, I mean, I have fun. <laughs> we can say that in terms of accidents with injuries, they do occur in that section of road, but not necessarily at a greater rate than in the county general. Well, you can see that's two years. Yeah. That's two years. Nine. Over the course of two years. And then, for those who say we don't patrol or give people tickets on that section of the road, it's a lot of stops. And that doesn't, and that doesn't include the highway patrol, who also stop people on that road. Well, these will be, these will be, like 50, 50, 50. Um, they will be high patrol, but we will respond to their mm -hmm. calls. You can see Norfolk County, area to agency in Norfolk County. Well, no, she just did ours. Yeah, these are just ours there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't include any stop safe with me. Yeah. Well, these are well, the stops. Those are the traffic stops. They and these are just the counties. Right there. Maybe Trapper's Loop. But the highlighted ones, as you can see, those are the addresses that were impacted. Trappers Mountain Goes 2 is the bottom of Trappers It was interesting, I, the traffic data. We tend to leave the county faster than we enter. <laughs> and, and, and look, if, if I'm leaving at 5 in the morning, I have less of a concern about one, getting the ticket, and two, that I'm going to engage with traffic. And it's a straight road, you know. Did you share with everybody else that? I haven't. It, it's amazing that you, you have no clue that it's sitting there. You know, tell you what time to do, what direction, certain speeds, average speed. That, Some boats are left at 118 miles an hour for Porterville. I've got it. I've got it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'll ship it. It's like Actually, 2 in the morning. Only when you're around, I've been here. Now, if I had a kid sitting in there. the back of the car and I was heading to the hospital, yeah. I might do 118 yeah. at 2 in the morning. Yeah, I've got a serious gun. You never know the situation. Okay. I haven't seen it. Okay. Okay, welcome to the Morgan County Commission meeting, July 5th, 2022. Uh, we just completed a work session discussing county <coughs> policies and procedures. Appreciate those who are participating in that discussion. We will begin with an invocation uh, or moment of reflection and pledge of allegiance, and I've asked Commissioner Wilson to take care of that. 
Rachel, Father in Heaven, we bow our heads this evening and give thanks for our blessings of living in this beautiful community. We're grateful for the residents that are here and, and the things that they do to help our community. We pray that they'll watch over them and bless them and their families. And, and we are grateful, Heavenly Father, for our freedoms. We ask you to bless our local and federal government that they can uh, make good choices. Pray for the family of the little girl in Kaysville that was killed yesterday. I ask you to bless and watch over them. We're thankful, Father in Heaven, for the things that we enjoy, and we pray that we can uh, not have any fires this year and, and that people will make good decisions in the way that they, they do the things here in our community so that we can protect our community. We pray for thy blessings to be here with us this evening. Ask the Heavenly Father that we can take care of the county business in a way pleasing unto thee and, and, and to our community. And we say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. amen. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. We will move to the consent items. We have one item that is approval of the June 21st, 2022 meeting minutes. Are there any uh, adjustments that need to be made to those minutes? I did receive adjustments to be made from um, Commissioner Thackeray and Garrett, Attorney Garrett Smith. So I've already done those, and then if there's any more, I'll get those done. Any other comments? Oh, sorry. I did have. I would have scanned these to you, but I was. I didn't have a scanner when I was reading through them. And I came in this morning to my office, and my whole printer was gone. So <laughs> I was too lazy to walk. So June twenty-first minutes. I did notice um, bottom of page three of the minutes. It notes Commissioner Anderson moved that we continue working with the policy. Anderson is spelled incorrectly there. It should be S E N. It's spelled incorrectly in a lot of places. I've just never mentioned it. I've been used to it all my life. <laughs> <laughs> I've been spelling it like this for not, seven months. Not a big deal. <laughs> Ian. So, Danish. Okay. It was a sin. He was not a son of Ander. <laughs> on, number, on number eight as well. It's, it's yeah, it looks it's like all of them. Not used to a fire so place. Five o'clock, A opening ceremonies. Did you get? The chair's last name needs to be capitalized. Where was this? I'm sorry. Opening ceremonies. Pledge of Allegiance. Did you say five? It was, sorry, that was the time. Opening ceremonies, number three, <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance, okay. Chair Newton. His name needs to be capitalized. Do you see that? Oh, I think I already was told that one. Yes. In item number two, um, on the top of page three, commission following the counties. That should just be possessive, C O U N T Y. Okay, you got that already? Um, same four in the motion, counties legal counsel should be possessive, not plural. And I think the name of the agreement, Morgan Solid Waste Administration, is it joint board? I couldn't understand what you're yes. saying. Yeah, I think it's joint, it's joint. not joined. Okay. It's a joint board between Morgan City and Morgan County. Okay. Mm -hmm. Item 8. Um, it's the description chair Newton stated that 100,000 was appropriated to the mountain green capital capital G oh yeah and 
was the amount correct? Well, yes, but yeah. we actually had to put was previously appropriated. Yeah. But were you doing a total of four hundred thousand then, or yes. four hundred? Well, the total was four hundred, but we'd already done the one hundred, so it was three hundred. Three hundred additional. And then you, in the commission, is contemplating giving two hundred thousand more to the sewer dist. Just go ahead and spell it out. You spell it out above, so. Okay. Those were mine. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Newtons are the only ones that I'll need to fix the rest of the Excellent. Okay, do we have a motion on the consent items? That is approval of the June 21st, 2022 meeting minutes. I move that we approve the June 21st, 2022 meeting minutes with all the corrections. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the June 21st, 2022 meeting minutes as amended this evening. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, Commissioner McConnell. We will now move to Commissioner's declaration of conflict of interest. Any conflicts with any items on this evening's agenda? Okay, seeing none. We will move to the public comment period. This is an opportunity for the public to address the commission. We will ask that you please state your name um, and keep your comments to a three minutes maximum. We do not have, I'm um, oh, sorry, we do have one public hearing on the agenda. It will be item G, so if you're here to discuss that item, there will be opportunity for a public hearing on that. With that, we'll open it to public comment. Lilia Allen, I just want to speak to um, the Northside Park and the development agreement. I went ahead and um, I've been writing on the the bike trail that was agreed upon, and um, so re being in the meetings, I kind of remembered a bit about it. So I went back to the development agreement, and um, I just wanted you guys to be aware that they built the bike trail bike lane to the roundabout only um, as I read on the and they finished their like entrance they've beautified the side and so it doesn't look like they're going to go any further but as I read on that development agreement it talks about that the bike lane needs to go from Cottonwood phase four and back down around to Willow Creek so they've kind of only done I guess half um, up to the roundabout and then it does talk about um, road improvements and there again to the roundabout it is really a nice road the bike lane is really nice by the way um, it's being used a ton lots of walkers and bikers um, but the road the asphalt stops also at the roundabout and it was very specific about um, bettering the roundabout um, but then it stops and it turns to gravel like it's road base I guess maybe that's what it's called I don't know and I think they are doing some road work up on top so maybe maybe that's coming down the line I don't know and there was one other thing in the development agreement um I know it does I can't remember what I don't have an issue but um it did talk about signage that there's supposed to be some signage that there's not but I think that, that's all that I can remember. Anyway, I just wanted to bring those to your attention, and uh, I would hope that the, the bike Was that the signage for the airport? Was continue. that what it was? Mm -hmm. Signage hanging on the... Well, you know, in the development agreement, it, I, it, I, I didn't see that it said. I guess I'm not supposed to be asking questions. <laughs> yeah, don't screw up. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, that they were supposed to install up to 10 signs approved by the county attorney. So I'm sure Garrett knows the specific sign language there. But anyway, I really would like to see the bike lanes there. And, uh, but it looks like they have finished 
the, you know, if they've got the curb and gutter in and that kind of thing from the roundabout up to their access point. So it looks complete as far as that goes. Thank you. Thank you. Tina Kelly, Mountain Green. I know you're working on the packets and all that, getting them in the right order, but if you look at the packet for today, unless you guys have items in your emails that aren't, that support the items that are on the agenda, there's nothing in the packet for anyone to look at and know what you're discussing on several of the items. I particularly wanted to know about item number five because you postponed that one to work on the conditions, and when I read through it, the packet has the, is the exact same packet of conditions that you had at the last meeting where you were making changes to those conditions, and my community was really concerned about what those conditions would be, and all, we, all that is in the packet for today is the same ones that were in the last packet. So that was really concerning to me. And you do have a, an ordinance that says for somebody to submit an item, whether it's a commissioner or a public member, but they have to have backup documents for each item. It's spelled out on the wall and it's spelled out in, the, in your ordinance. So I'd hope to start seeing some more of those as, as we're going forward. And I don't mean to be critical. I know exactly what you're going through. I, I just had hoped to read the packet this morning and get some information and didn't. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further public comment, we'll go ahead and close the public comment period and thank those who participated. We will move to um, presentation. Um, our county recorder, Brenda Nelson, uh, regarding monument replacement and restoration grant. Hello, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. I just want to bring your guys to your attention that Morgan County submitted for a grant for $40,000 for the preservation. Um, last year we only got about 14, but this is a one time to be able to get more than we usually do because of the monies that was allotted to the ARGC and we were able to obtain all the funding that we requested, all $40,000. Mm -hmm. um, it's non-matching and so this will come from the, um, the state through the ARGC and we will be, um, it runs through um, the middle of 2023, and we will be collecting um, 20 to 30 uh, corners um, as the surveyor goes out there and establishes some corners for Morgan County. Um, this isn't a tax, um, this isn't a burden to the taxpayers here in Morgan County, it, and um, it's very necessary to get the corners in, in the proper positions, and for developments and um, anybody do a survey and so we appreciate the years of that we've been able to get the, the funding through um, submitting for grants that we don't have to match with. That's wonderful. Thank you. Right, thanks. We appreciate your diligence in working on those grants as they become available and are excited about the opportunity. $40,000 is a lot of money and will go a long ways towards reestablishing those corners, so thank you. Okay. So how many How many is that going to do for us? 20 to 30 20, corners. 20 to 30. Okay. Yeah, when you're looking at corners, you're looking at the, uh, the northwest, southwest, okay. southeast, southwest, uh, southeast and southwest, and um, hopefully we can find some of the east and west corners as well in those sections that we're looking at. Okay. Our, our main ones we're looking at is the growth areas that we're and moving in the vicinity in those areas that growth is coming. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in to share that with us. We love to hear that there's money flowing into the county that's not out of taxpayer pockets. So, thank you. <laughs> or at least not local property taxpayer pockets. Okay, uh, let's move to our action items. First item on the agenda, Mr. John Cannon and Mr. Brett Heiner. Discussion is and decision on request for $6,000 for fair rodeo expenses. Uh, 
unfortunately, uh, I've been roped into handling the rodeo again this year, but I guarantee this will be my last year, so I won't be back <laughs> next year. Uh, we're, uh, we might make that a condition of approval. <laughs> be careful what you say, John. <laughs> anyway, la last year the county supported the rodeo um, with some additional funds that we use for marketing the rodeo, uh, going after local participants to participate in the rodeo, and uh, other other items that you know enhance the rodeo and so we'd like to we'd like to do the same we're requesting to do the same thing this year that we did last year the six thousand dollars will go to uh, producing a little bit better rodeo this year we have uh, we're gonna spend about seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars on video production during the rodeo we've got most of that sponsored uh, by private sources we want to encourage the local people to participate again and pay some entry fees. And uh, and then there was a few items, Brad, that you had that... Yeah, just some local events that we... Well, you, you was there last year. That just helps fund those local events, like the wild cow milking and those kind of events. We'd like to use that money to pay the entry fee for any councilman that'd like to participate in the, <laughs> in the wild cow milking. Yeah. <coughs> well, fortunately for us, we're not council members, so you know what? We're, we're off the hook. <laughs> My commissioner faculty would like to ride a bull. No. Nope. I'll, I'll tell you, the other day I tried to do the potato sack race. I made two jumps, and I was flat. <laughs> Well, we could help you with that. <laughs> so I'll try to milk it if you'll hold it. We could we could have a bowl would. that you could milk. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna do a bowl. I'll take a cow. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's ba basically we're we're trying to accomplish the same thing. I think I think the rodeo last year was very successful. We brought a lot of people into the community. Um, We've, we've gone a little further this year to try to make it just a little bit better uh, with things like reserve seating and some more marketing and, and really try to bring some out-of-town uh, out people into our community to spend their money for that event. And ho hopefully, my goal, my goal is to double the revenue that we had last year. And I don't know if we're going to get there, but I think it's possible. So I think that would be a good thing. And that'll help us pay for the parachute jumpers and the flyover. We give them a little bit of fuel to do that for us. That's just some of the things that we used the money for last year. It seemed to be a pretty good crowd because of it. So I think it'd be even better. We're trying for better. Yeah, last year was the first time we ever sold out. Yeah, had to stop selling tickets. I think some of these events helped it, and so I think. It had lots so of this positive come comments from the community. Does this come out of the fund balance, or is this part of what we advance and then they cover their own expenses? Yeah, it's kind yeah. of the extra balance. So it's basically an addition. I mean, if they bring in revenue, or when they bring it in, it will come out of that, not out of the non-departmental. Is that correct? No, it would no, come out of the fund balance. Fund balance for right now. Until the revenues come in? No. no. It's a donation to the fair. It, it's a donation to the fair. Yeah. It would be a portion that the county would spend towards the fair. It helps them when they go to build a pavilion and things like that. That's what it would yeah, go so towards the, if it's in the profits. The revenue that comes from the fair, we, we divert into the, or we move into the Fairground Improvement Fund at the end of the year, which we did this last time, and that's what's paying for the pavilion that will be built. We did make more, more money last year, and that's what's really helping my like commissioner you know, saying that we've, we are building a pavilion this year, which is taking a lot of that extra money that we did make, but that's be a great improvement on the fairgrounds. And if we can double, you know, uh, if we can double the revenue this year, how, how we're, how we're going to try to do that is We've, uh, Brett and I have gone through and we've created 
uh, some reserve seating, and we're and we're just charging more money for a reserve seat, and we think that'll we think that's going to go over pretty well, and and that'll help us with extra ticket revenue for the rodeo. There's a lot, a lot of, of seat reservation that goes on informally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Duct tape and blankets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'll put a plug in for the the fair and rodeo, um, just for the members of the public. Those tickets are on sale now, so you can go buy your rodeo tickets today if you'd like, both reserved and non-reserved. Through the fair website. Through the fair website, <clears throat> correct. And after tonight, I imagine once they hear Blaine will be participating, I imagine it will be sold out. So get your tickets early. <laughs> you may want to sign up right now for your tickets. So. You can have a commissioner that's volunteer that's to get run over Friday. I guarantee you Saturday you sell out. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, with that money, if you if you'll uh, agree to to support that. We will guarantee one of the flag girls will fall off their horse. <laughs> we can't guarantee which night, but we guarantee at least one. Right, right. I don't. I don't want that to happen. There's too much danger in it. Okay. Any questions? The question is: Is are you going to continue if we do this? He will. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to quit squawking about property taxes. What? Well, I, I always, I'm, I'm always very concerned about what we charge our citizens in property tax. <laughs> okay, so this is coming out of your property taxes. Especially our older citizens. So. And I asked one of them. I'm one of them. We're hope. Well, what, what we're hoping to do, just, we're hoping that the go the goal of putting events on like this is not only to support the. Our local community but it's to bring people in here uh, when they come to a rodeo we tip them upside down shake all the money out of their pants <laughs> and send them home and so that's really the goal so so hopefully events like this can can help us generate sales tax income so we that's can exactly eventually right. reduce the property tax that's right well, but we'll leave that for you, the big decisions. For really you appreciate all that you do, John, all yeah. the work, John and Brett, the work that you guys put into this. Um, if there's no other comments, I'll make a motion. Make a motion that we approve the amount of $6,000 for um, fair rodeo expenses coming out of the general fund. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the disbursement of $6,000 from the general fund balance to um, fair rodeo expenses. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you. All that you do. And the fair board in general. We've been working very hard. They're meeting regularly to get things going here. Okay, Mr. Heiner, you get to stay in the hot seat. Yes, I'm by myself. Huh? Uh, item number two is uh, discussion decision proposed purchase of fencing and trailers. Let's talk about the transport first. Um, I sent the, pro the, the bids over to Commissioner Wilson. We didn't get it on for you guys to see. Do you want me to pass these around? Yeah. Go ahead and do that. So we are in need of a transport. Yep, I've got one. And the reason is, is ours is really not adequate to haul the dozer to fight fires. It's uh, it's in tough shape. I mean, we are using it. It does work, but it's not the safest piece of equipment that we have. And the only reason I'm pursuing it now is because I have a way to pay for it. I wouldn't really pursue anything like this and we have a way to pay for it. But to give you an example, our our uh, transport, the max you can, you can pack on is about 40,000 pounds, and the dozer weighs just a little over that. If you look at this one, commissioners, this one's 60,000 pound um, capacity, which is a little bit longer, a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, be quite a bit safer. And if if you really want, you can follow us dragging it, and then you'd be able to, and then you'd have more of an opinion like like I have of of our transport. And that price that I give you there is on state contract, just like the ten wheelers that we bought. They're on state contract, which you, which the state's already done the the uh, the uh, 
process to get the to get to to get the best price not only in the state but in, in the Intermountain West. That price right there beats any other price by at least ten thousand dollars if we just went to any other place to buy one. So there's no need to bring those other those other uh, bids in on a transport. That's what's nice about being on state contract. We do a few things on state contract, like we bought our trucks, salt, those kind of things are pretty convenient for us. The state does a lot of that work for us, so that's why there's only one price. Why would we pay two thousand dollars to bring it from Salt Lake to here? Um, is that on there? There's a freight okay, charge. We, on there. Yeah, we, we wouldn't do that. Okay. Yeah, that's. Would we just go down and get it? We just go down and get it. Yeah. When it comes in, it'll it'll be to Salt Lake. So I'd be. I didn't notice that. But that's. We wouldn't do that. That's probably something they put on just for the Intermountain area. I would think. And then so what, was, what about the old one? Are we? Yeah, were they giving us some money for it? What? No, we we'd be better just to put it up for sale, in my opinion. We'd be able to sell it. What we'd get, I haven't really pursued that too much. I'm guessing we would get uh, ten to fifteen out of it, so we could put that back in the fund. So you you would eventually take that off that price. So we do you want to tell them where the money's coming from? Yeah. So the reason we have some funds to. Do, that we can use is from our insurance. Now remember both our disasters that we had, the windstorm and the, the road shop on fire. Um, the, me and my guys did a lot of that work ourselves to bring that building back up and especially the salt shed, we saved quite a bit of money there. So I've got some money in that account that we can use for something like this and I think that's a great, a great way to use the money. Um, to get the equipment that we need. So, so we don't need it out of the general fund. We don't even need it out of capital improvements. This is out of the insurance fund. So why is there no spare tire? What's that? No spare wheel. Um, That's what it says here. We'll probably buy one for it. And that price, they, he just that didn't price they had to throw away. He just didn't include it all. <laughs> Hey, you got two places here. It says no spare wheel and no spare tire. And that but then you do have mud flaps. Yeah, you should have them. The spare tire on those, you just keep them in the shop and throw them in the truck when you need to. You had fencing listed on here. Is there yeah, more we'll discussion on that, or do we want to do we want to finish this discussion separate. and then do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a separate fund. We'll take that out if we, if we do. Okay. Any additional questions? I don't have any. So, is there an account with the insurance proceeds? There is an account, but I don't know yeah, the number. I don't know which one it is. Do you know the number by chance, Brett? The account number for uh, the insurance? No, I've got it on my desk. But I can tell you how much is in there. Close. We just need it for the motion. Okay. I, I can get it to you quick. More documents so they can, they can write it in there every time. Do you need the expense account number for the way yeah. That's what he's yeah. yeah. asking for. I'm sure we could. I've got it in my office, but I don't have it with me. I guess the only other thing I'd add, I just wanted to make sure trade discount didn't made that was what they were giving us for our trade. No, there wasn't. That's was just nothing. a discount for Being government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't even looked at ours. I mean, I could trade it in, but we need to get one in before we, you know what I mean? I need to get one here and then. Why are we jumping from 40 to 60? Or is that just so we, really so we can haul the track and dozer. The tracker weighs about that, and the dozer weighs a little over that. So that that 
transport. It's not the biggest transport. It's not real big for what, you know, compared to, like, the state has a transport, but it's, it's a 60. It's quite a bit longer and heavier. It's bent, actually, if you, if you look at it, it's bent because it's been overloaded. It was like that before I came. I can just hear it with. I'm just trying to see if I can find yeah. the number, but I don't. Yeah, you can yeah. do it. With the we get to fire season. We, lo we load the dozer and have it on a truck fueled up and ready to go. Oh, she's got the number. She's got This number I recognize. <laughs> This 600, this 10 dash right here, huh? Okay, you want the number? Yeah. 10 dash 3340 dash 600 dash 100. Okay, repeat that again. 10 dash 3340 dash 600 dash 100. Dash 100. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have a motion on this item? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the Road Department's acquisition of a TKT 60 LP tilt trailer with 60,000 pounds capacity with funding to come from account 10-3340-600-100. I'll second it. There's a motion and a second to approve um, the purchase of the transport trailer on the amount of $48,890, correct? That's correct. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, op any opposed? Comment. Yes. You said 48000 I thought it would be 2000 less than that. Oh, uh, yeah, it probably uh, will be. Matt, it'll, it'll be in, in August. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll have we'll like that. That, <laughs> that freight. That freight may be freight to, for them to get it to their dealership. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe not. So I know they're not charging 2000 So we'll go to the 48890 and if it's we less go, because you pick it up, pick great. It up way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's on order. It's coming in. It's a weeder order. Okay. And and then we will have the sale of it through Matt's UAC thing, public service surplus property, the old yep. one. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll okay. advertise the old one when we get ready. Good. Probably some, after we get the new one set up. So okay. that'll help some. Okay, let's talk about the fencing item you had, Brett. Okay, the fencing item is chain link fence. Uh, we do have some over the road, over the public works building, the road shop. We have some that goes around the back, that comes around each corner. I would like to fence it with gates uh, to be more secure if we could. I mean, it, it's actually nice the way it is now because you can come in easier, really, but um, I think it would be a good idea that kind of equipment we have you know we try to put everything inside but there's not enough room for everything we have there's not enough base not everything fits in there we have been hit a couple of times in the last couple of months siphoning fuel I've got a couple of calls besides the time we got hit I got a couple of calls late at night that hey there's somebody over messing around at your place so we come down and check it out that happens and that's happened before but I think now that it's fixed up pretty nice, it's going to happen even more. So that's the reason for it, just to be secure. And like I say, uh, the way it is now is, is really nice just to come in and out, but not on the weekends if it's midnight, you know. So what fund will it come out of? Yeah, I was going to say, what's the dollar amount? And the so so my, my, here's my concern on the thing, and that's why I wanted to be able to discuss. I, I mean... I told Brett, I think, I think the fence is needed, but to have four slide gate operators with build-in radio receivers and backup power read and photo eyes and all that stuff, I think that might be a little over the top for Morgan County. I think the guys might be able to get out and move a gate open. It's open all day, I would think, right? Yeah. We'd have to have slide gates on there. The four gates is actually two gates. Because they go like this. It's actually one gate. It's not. It's not one opening. Yeah. Sure, but I'm. I'm just talking about being able to walk up and put in your code, your 
whatever, you know. Yeah, the only difference is we're on the road. It's twenty four grand for we're not we're not down a lane with so they've got to park on the road to open a gate. You what? I say we're on we're on a road instead of down a lane. Like the state, let's say, has a spot to pull in off the road, open a get out of your vehicle, open a gate and then here. But that's why I'd like to have automatic gates. I mean I I think we've got enough money to do it. In which budget? Where are you reading that off of? Yeah, see, we you don't didn't have give any him any information. You didn't give. I thought he just handed you guys this. No, no, he just just gave us the trailer. Sorry. Just the trailer stuff. We don't have the quote. So we have enough stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what was the funding source, bro? Capital improvements. And you could take this out of uh, insurance fund too. Either one. We've got enough in capital improvements to do it. Oh, these are the two separate bids. Yeah. Gotcha. We had to work hard to get two bids. Um, <clears throat> one question I would have on capital improvement, where are we at on our improvement plan for this facility? So we typically bring in about $100,000 in, in revenue to that capital improvement fund through the tax levy. Um, last year we spent the vast majority of that on the salt shed. Um, and I'm not opposed to, to spending more on, on that facility, but my question is, is there should we be spending some money on this facility this year as well? Well, we have. We put about 40000 in here out of okay. so far this year. So we have. And um, I mean, we could use some of the money out of the insurance fund, too. We have quite a bit in there. I mean, the transport's not going to use it. Not close. So, I mean, that, that'd be an idea, too. I mean, we, we've got a way to pay for it. I just think it'll finish the facility off nice. It'd be permanent, last a long time. Going to save us a problem down the road. Probably save us some money on a weekend when then we could get some damage. You know. And I and we couldn't do it until now because we had to finish the parking lot. I don't know if you know, we we had to finish paving what we couldn't pave last fall. So when you put this fence in, you you pave first, and then they go in and core drill the holes for the fence after you pave so so it's just been the last couple of months we've been ready to, or last month and a half that we're really ready to think about doing this couldn't even attempt it until now so that's the reason for the timing on it i'd like to postpone it myself till i can go over funds better that's, that's me if you guys have I would different agree. feelings that emotion, i would yeah? just like to <laughs> yeah i'll make a motion that we postpone it Till we can meet, till I can meet with Kimberly and go over the the funds, you know. And I'll second it. I just want to, I just want to verify all that. I know this is going to be a difficult year with our inflation stuff, inflationary stuff. So I just want to make sure we're not digging out of our general pot at the end. And that's fine. We can leave it the way it is. This isn't a must-have, really. I mean, it'd be nice to secure it, but. So how how the facility's done except for this. So. How long do we have to use the insurance money? And have we taken care of all the things that was there's burned still, down? There's still some small things that I'm doing just because it's hard to get things. I mean there's there's a couple of things that I have on order. I have a fuel tank that's coming in to replace our tank. I just there's a few little items, but most of the big stuff's done. And then we'll find something I mean we just didn't go through and just buy everything that burned up because there's a lot of things that we didn't need, you know. So we're, we're finding small things that, hey, we, we, we never bought this, but, you know, not $52,000 things, just small things. And that'll, and that'll continue, I think, for a while. We'll keep buying those small items as we need them. But there's a, there's a lot of items in there that were old, you know, that, that weren't used anymore or 
or there's a, you know there's a few items in there that we just flat didn't need, so we, we haven't replaced every little thing. Okay. The, the insurance monies were checks given to you, right? There wasn't a time frame or when they had to be spent. They were literally yeah, checks no given frame, to you. It's just our money. And really the money, the extra money came from our labor and then some of those items that we haven't replaced. You know, they give us they give us the money for signs that we would never buy. You know, they're obsolete signs that were new. And there was, there was some parts in there. Uh, there was you know, like some cases of oil filters for trucks that were brand new, but we don't have the truck anymore. So, but we still got paid for that kind of stuff. So that's where the money added up. But the majority of it added up doing a lot of labor ourselves. And like when the salt shed, we, we saved a lot of money on the salt shed doing all that site work ourselves. So that's probably more than half of that money in the fund is from that. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to postpone the fence item. Pending further discussion on the budget. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you, Brett. You can keep Brett. copies if you want. Okay, I'll, send, I'll email them to them, Brett. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Brett. Appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> Aaron Bott. I don't she's believe she's here. here. No, Do you want to cover that? Yeah, one? I can cover it in place of her. This is really. Just open it back up. Um, this is just recommend recommending um, Sadie McBride as a new library board trustee. She's just asking for approval for that. No question on that. Um, I'm pretty sure it's happened in that department, but just curious. We seem to have in the past not interviewed or whoever had to interview the different applicants have we done the process this time i can check and see i know with the library board we beg people yeah no. um we do not have people that apply for it so we we do everything we can to try and find somebody i think this has been open for quite some time okay i don't know that's why i'm just asking so that way we, we don't have a complaint like we did two a month ago or two weeks ago where yeah. we received an application when we never interviewed anybody I would assume that if there were multiple applications that would be included here, but perhaps not. No, we don't it have is any. difficult to get applicants for these volunteers. Yeah. Was it posted? Yeah, that's a great question. I believe, yeah, the issue went through the, I believe it was, I don't know if you remember or not. I had nothing to do with it. Oh. She never went to me. Okay. Me yeah, if you're concerned, Wayne, we can make sure we can check those I boxes will. and see. I would say We've been without them for this it. long. It's not going to hurt us. But. Yeah. So what do you want to check? I just say let's check and make sure that it was posted, that we had a fair opportunity within the county to uh, uh, to apply for the advisory board uh, or the library board trustee and uh, make sure that they interviewed them if they had more than one applicant. I'd be surprised if she didn't, but I can check. I know. I'm just asking yep. to make sure. So I move that we postpone this until we know the answers to those questions. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to postpone, um, pending confirmation of a couple of items. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Moving to item number four, Sergeant Corey Stark, discussion dis decision regarding two new deputy sheriff ones to go to the academy starting August 1st. Okay, so technically everybody knows that we have one that's retiring now and we have one that's going to be retiring at the end of the year. In order to stay ahead of our game, we want to get these new kids hired. Um, the next academy starts in August, which their academy would end in December. So then we can have them out on patrol and start FTOing at that time. With one deputy already leaving last week, his, between his wages, he's a 20-year guy, his wages is going to cover the majority of the wages that we're paying these two guys. I think it's over by $3, $3 an hour. But that being said, we have that money in our wage fund due to not hiring people the first year, not till May. So we still have that, that money in that account. So we're, we would pay for the academy, I assume? The academy's free to, for the county. Oh, okay. All we're doing is paying for their wages. 
uh, while they're in the academy. While they're in the academy. How long does the academy last? August to December. August to December. That's a long academy. Yeah. That's and great. these are people you've already interviewed, I guess. Like. We've interviewed them and told them their stipulations. We've got to wait to see if we're going to have You guys will approve. Do we, do we have some type of a document that they sign that commits them to a time period? So, yeah, we're going to try to get them to a while there. Uh, we ran into a problem with this at Weber County when I was down at Weber County. We would sign a document saying we would be there for at least two years. We can have them sign this document, but in all reality, it's not a void because you do have the right to fire them. So if you have the right to fire them, they have the right to leave. Yeah, but if they receive money from, from us, which they are going to be doing. Say that again? I say if they receive money from us, then they are obligated. I had one, just a scholarship. And I had to work in a in a uh, rural school for a period of time in that field. You're paying them. You're paying them a wage for a job that they're going to be doing. So it's just same as. But we're not paying. I don't get it. Then. Yeah, we're not paying for the school. The job is the, them going to school. school. It's their time yeah. while they go to school. So we're just compensating them while they're in the academy. We're not paying for their schooling. Well, I think they should have at least a, a year. Well, I'd like to, to have them sign a two-year contract, but like I said, I think you can have them sign that. But I uh, would have to talk, to talk to Garrett here. I'm unsure if we'd actually be able to stick him to that. Can you, Garrett? So I'm. The wheels are I thought that there was because we have done a similar contract for we a cost a agreement um, yeah. where. The cost to attend is it is it for post is it yes. that academy? So we have done one for the county where there we, was have, we have them currently right now that has signed a contract. We we'll say we'll have them sign that. I just don't know if we can actually stick it to them. And but you know the cost of the training, ten thousand dollars if they leave. Um, let's see if they leave on or before completion of the first year, they'll pay back the total amount of costs. <coughs> if they leave on or before completion of two years, they pay back two thirds. The third year, they pay back one third, and then after that. And is it legally binding? It's legally okay? To it's a cost agreement that's been used in other jurisdictions, and, okay. and so. Great. Yeah. We already have I, so I think if we, Go we'll move forward in this direction. We can have them follow the same cost agreement. Sure. And have you talked to them about that? Yeah, we. I already mentioned to both of them that we have them have signed a contract. Uh, we have one in the academy right now that has signed that contract, and everybody's willing to. Just, yeah. And I think the contract actually states if they leave law enforcement, they don't have to pay it back. But if they leave to go to another agency or office, they oh. have to pay it back. Makes sense. That, that does make sense. They can't get hired away by somebody trying to us put them through and then steal them. Because <laughs> the highway department does it. I mean, not the highway, state highway. Because after the academy, the you might not want to go into law enforcement. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so it says after deputy has completed three years of employment with Morgan County Sheriff's Office or the in, in the event of death or total disability, deputy shall have no obligation to pay the county back. I'm okay with that one. I'm excited that we've got folks who are interested in law enforcement. You, I you, think you it's starting to see it turn back the other direction. That's wonderful. We, we actually have a pretty good opportunity. we got some really good experience out here right now with guys that have expert, expert experience in certain areas. So new guys coming in here and they learn that. That's a big get on their end. That's great. So I have a question. Um, in the hiring process that you've already hired or done, was the HR involved in at all in hiring this? Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, I'm fine. Okay, any other questions? If not, we'll look for a motion. And again, the item here is is paying the two deputies who will be going through post for their time as they attend the the training. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay. who's paying for the post itself? Yes. The state offers that to the counties. 
to put people through their academies. Now, people can self-sponsor and put themselves through that, and then, of course, it's going to cost them money. But as a county, we... So the county's paying it? No. The state offers that okay. to the counties. All right. Sounds good. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the hiring of two new deputy sheriffs to go to the Post Academy starting on August 1st, 2022, with the funds for compensation to come from the sheriff's employment and wages line items. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the two deputy sheriffs to be hired um, to go through the Academy starting August 1st. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. And Before thank you to the Sheriff's Department for all you do. All right, thank you. May I ask you one more question along that? Yeah. How many total sh deputies will you have in your department at that point? Fourteen. Fourteen at that point? At that point. Okay. All right. Okay. Item number five. Mr. John Red and Ryan Brown, discussion decision conditional use permit for drug and alcohol residential treatment facility. I can probably take the lead on this if, okay. if you'd like, but the applicant's welcome to speak as well. I've been in contact with the applicant's attorney. I did forward an email to you about 4 o'clock today um, of their final red line going back and forth, so I hope you had a chance to read through that. I. Um, I'll let the applicants speak to uh, the discussions they've had with their attorney and whether they approve it as is. I have printed a copy um, based on that final red line. Um, and if, if they approve it, which is kind of awkward since they're represented, I can't speak with them directly about this without their attorney, but um, through the meeting, if, if it all looks good. I can pass them a copy. They can sign it, and then I can um, return it back to you as well. But this is just a follow-up of prior meetings that we've had and um, satisfying some of the concerns on, on the party side of defining terms more clearly so that the applicants aren't held to a standard that's not clearly defined and that the county understands um, what what they're intending to do as well so if you have any questions for me or, or the applicant can speak as well commissioners any questions on the red line copy that you have and I think it may be beneficial just for the benefit of the public if we go through and read those conditions. Okay. Um, I know that was a question brought up earlier was what are those conditions um, that we've listed in the, the agreement. This is, it's very similar also to what I sent out um, two and a half weeks ago or so to the commission. We just hadn't had the, fee, you know, the full the finalization until today. Um, this is under Article 2, Conditions of the CUP for the RTC. Uh, CUP is defined above as a conditional use permit, and the RTC is defined above as the Residential Treatment Center. It says the conditions listed below have been imposed by the county pursuant to Morgan County Code 8-9-5 and Utah County Code 17-27A-506 and have been agreed to by the parties. Uh, the first condition that the RTC obtain all state required permits from the Utah Garrett, Department. was that Utah State Code or you, you said Utah County? Just, um, so just, I meant to say County Code 8-9-5 and then Utah Code. Okay. So there, it does comply with both our code and, and the county code as far as our State code is superseded by, by Utah Fair Housing. Okay, that the RTC obtain all state required permits from the Utah Department of Human Services required for the use permitted pursuant to the CUP at the property prior to operation. That six off-street parking spaces are provided for the staff and any visitors to the RTC. That no more than eight RTC residents will be housed and treated at any time 
at the RTC under the current Morgan County Code. However, if Morgan County Code is amended, the RTC shall be permitted additional RTC residents so long as the number of RTC residents complies with the amended code and the Utah Department of Human Services residential treatment rules and regulations. This would just allow the applicant to submit a code amendment and if there is an approval by the commission to um, to enlarge or you know to increase, increase then they wouldn't have to apply for a new CUP after that. Uh, the next one, that 24-hour supervision is provided to all RTC residents while they are physically located within Morgan County. Uh, that was one of the changes that was recently made, just um, narrowing it to Morgan County because they may do trips outside of the county and, and then it wouldn't be under Morgan County's jurisdiction at that point. That the RTC will comply with all fire code requirements for a residential facility per the Mountain Green Fire Protection District that the RTC is not a justice reinvestment initiative certified facility, that no registered sex offenders be housed at the RTC, that no violent offenders be housed at the RTC. I'm going to jump ahead to the next section that um, defines violent offender uh, for purposes of this agreement. It's a person who either has been convicted of um, an offense during the course of which the person carried, possessed, or used a firearm or other dangerous weapon, or there occurred the use of force against the person of another, or there occurred the death of or serious bodily injury to any person without regard to whether proof of any of the elements described herein is required to convict, or has previously been convicted of a felony crime of violence involving the use or attempted use of force against a person with the intent to cause death or serious bodily harm. Okay, and then the next condition is that the RTC will be restricted from housing any person with current illegal use of addiction to or addiction to any federally controlled substance as defined in Section 102 of the Controlled Substances Act, which is 21 uh, U.S. Code Section 802 and further detailed in 21 U.S. Code Section 812. This restriction is pursuant to the Utah Fair Housing Act 57-21-2 subsection 10B and the Fair Housing Amendments Act which is 42 U.S. Code 3602 subsection H. And those are the conditions. Any questions from the commission regarding the conditions? So with the changes proposed by your legal counsel this afternoon, are you comfortable with the form of the agreement? Yeah, there's one change that I just need to ask counsel about, but I can make a phone call. A change that your counsel made? Yeah, well, okay. I, I just want to see if he got that change in there. Um, in the document, we had been going back and forth over the last couple of days. Do you want to come see? There were there were two changes. There were two changes he discussed. Is it this one here at the end? Just barely, he said we haven't talked about it been removed. Here, I'll show you this red line. Yeah, um, <coughs> the only other thing that we're just discussing is 2.1.3. Um, I just didn't want us this to simply preclude us from being able to file for reasonable accommodation at some other point. Oh. And if we decide once we do, we can make a case and can show that there's a and you might want to speak it into the mic too, but you can, okay. yeah, you can take this with yeah, you I and think, as you're looking at it. Because I, I didn't know which, we had a couple forms back and forth, and so the other one that is 2.1.3, um, we understand no more than eight. We just don't want, by agreeing to this in the CUP, for it to preclude, preclude us um, from asking for a reasonable accommodation for more than eight um, at some point in the future. 
and he was this is just under to put the that code. into it as well. So that wasn't con communicated through council okay. to Are you getting with him right now? So 2.1.3 says that you're limited to eight. Correct. However, if the county code is amended, it says the RTC shall be permitted additional RTC residents so long as the number of RTC residents complies with the amended code and the Utah Department of Human Services residential treatment rules and regulations. Correct. But if the code is not amended, um, would like to just make sure that this doesn't preclude us from asking for a reasonable accommodation in the future. I don't read it as precluding you okay. from doing that, but I don't think our code per presently permits it and Correct. approval. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you could ask for it, but unless the code is amended, I don't think you could get any, okay. anything else. So it's just a, there's a process to follow to get to the request, I guess yeah. is the way I would say it. What does well, And the waiver, maybe I can get to that, because that was something that was new that I did put in the email. Are there any questions on on the removal of that waiver. Yeah, all, all of this I've read through a okay, lot. Okay, so do you want this? No, that, the waiver wasn't intended to address a fair housing claim. Okay. It was intended to address land use claims that the legal counsel was asserting. But I don't have a problem with the changes proposed today. Okay. So that has been removed, and yeah. you can confirm that with... With, with Gavin. Yeah, so is that the only area that you're concerned about with this agreement? Sorry, yes. sir? I say, is that the only area you are concerned about of this agreement yeah we we can agree to the other aspects of it to the other conditions for a motion I don't have any more questions yeah, I don't have anything to discuss okay mr. chair I'll make a motion to approve the reprieve recovery recovery conditional use permit for a residential treatment center application number 22.016 located at 5525 West Mountain View Drive based on the findings and with the conditions listed in the staff report of dated June 7th, 2022, and as modified as follows, that those conditions are clarified as set forth in the, make sure I get the title of this right, conditional use agreement for reprieve recovery center LLC uh, with the location indicated and uh, set forth and with the additional condition that um, the applicant sign this conditional use agreement uh, which clarifies and states forth the conditions that were uh, reviewed by attorney Smith this evening I'll second it okay we have a motion and a second to approve the conditional use permit as well as the conditional use agreement for reprieve recovery center LLC all those in favor of the motion Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to sign Commissioner up? Wilson, okay, discussion here. decision, uh, gun range discussion. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I thought we had everything ironed out with our doing our new fees, and all I created is myself a hornet's nest all the time it seems like um, with non-stop calls of, of people that 
want exceptions to the rules, you know. And so I'm just wondering if maybe, since I haven't been involved in this previously, um, until this time, there's, it seems like there's lots of things that have, have come up, and I'm thinking maybe I should relook at it and present some more. Like I had a police um, jurisdiction down in Syracuse that come up and do their practices here. Um, so they're out of towners, but they love doing it up here. It, they rent it for a half a day, and they've been renting it for twenty-five dollars, and now it's seventy-five dollars. I've had church organizations call and say, "Hey, we've always been able to get these places for free. Now, it, now it's, it's saying we can't do that." What you know? And so I guess, and then you have the people that say, "Hey, we're kind of nonprofit. What?" So I don't know how, I really don't know how to deal with the whole thing, to tell you the truth. If you have any suggestions, I'd be happy to take them. Um, I didn't think we were being unreasonable, but I didn't realize how much. And I'm, I'm not being flippant about it or anything like that. I'm just saying I didn't realize that it would, you know, those amounts that we changed them to would create such a, a problem. If a group from Syracuse comes all the way up to Morgan to use a facility, why don't they use other facilities that are much closer? I think it's I think it's because it's it's, it's inex because it's twenty five bucks. It's, it's, it's <laughs> inexpensive <laughs> for them. Yeah, and they like to keep up on their skills, you know, and I, they can't afford to to uh, go to some of the other places to do that kind of thing, so. Move up here and be a police officer or a sheriff's deputy, then they don't have to worry. It's here. <laughs> I can share some discussions I've had with the clerk if you'd like. Sure. Because um, the revenue's actually gone down because less people are renting the facilities. A lot of them were out of town people that were using it. And I think. I don't know what the reason behind raising it, but I'd imagine it was to say, okay, well, let's at least pay and increase the revenues, and it's done the, the opposite as far as what the, the clerk who reserves the range has, has communicated to me. I think we were more concerned about our residents being able to use the facility True. and not just having out-of-town resident or out-of-town um, people booking it up and our residents not being able to get it. But if if that's the case, we de definitely don't want to. And, and maybe so that I, has I worked, add this but though, it is very open that's now a two where it sword used to be very booked. Because just because revenue is down, it also may mean the costs are down. You know, the, the wear and tear on the facility is less. Yeah. Sure. And we need to recognize that the revenue from those facilities, from our parks, from our gun range, those revenues from the rentals do not cover our costs. So they're tax subsidized. Right. And that's been my biggest thing is, you know, I, I live in Croydon, and the Croydon Park we rent out to, to folks to camp at, right? And most of the summer, in, for the last 10 years that I've lived there, it's booked out every weekend by folks who don't live in the county. They pay a very cheap fee, or did, to reserve and use the facility, and then we subsidize it as taxpayers because we're paying for the facilities and maintenance. That's my biggest thing, is I, I, I understand people complaining about it, but the only complaints I've gotten on the rifle range, because I've received a couple calls too, has been folks who don't live in the county. And to that part of it, I say, well, it should be a benefit to those who live in the county, especially because they're the ones who are really covering the cost. Your $75 fee doesn't actually cover the cost. But that's that's my opinion on it. I agree though every time we change fees, I mean I I've got another one I will send out to you on the on the rental of the of the uh, facility here, the the auditorium from a group that's a non profit and has typically used it in the past at no charge. Those are tough to deal with because we've got all these one off situations. So I don't know. But I, I'm totally in favor of, of you investigating that and okay. if you feel like we need to make adjustments I I'm all ears. I think that's all right. right. I'll look at it then, and if you're okay with that, I'll look at it and try and 
figure something out and try and See think of all the facilities charge and, and make some exceptions. Do we know what other, what's the one off of Interstate 80 as you get out past the airport? Lee, something Lee Gun Center. I'd be interested in how our rate compares to like other municipal or county facilities. Well, I did have some someone send us Weavers, and and they're less than we raised ours to, and it is a nicer facility, but they have is more that money down there the too. Full facility or just for one? Individual? No, but they they really don't want to book the whole facility and that was their thing is, is we don't need to book the whole facility we just want to be able to shoot but you're forcing us to book the whole, the whole facility well and I think that's a limitation we have because other other places are set up where it can be individuals yeah so overall they're generating a lot more revenue because they got 20 people there all paying their fee here we're doing it to one individual at a time they're getting the whole facility yeah. to somebody who wants to go with their, a group of friends or a group of family and shoot it's a cheap. bunch of them at once it's really cheap per person but for one individual it is expensive and yeah. I, I can understand that and maybe there's some solution there maybe we need to change the facility somehow to accommodate that I mean, then again maybe not money. you know I don't know it would be interesting though to see how Weber runs there so you you really can't unless you have a Firearms. You'd have to have somebody up there on range on site, master. whatever master or whatever they yeah. are. In. Range master. Yeah. So they're paying for that and they're charging cheaper, right? But they have tons of people there. But you could have thirty or forty people there at a time, right? Each yeah. paying that fee instead of. I mean, that's why our rate's higher. Yeah. I'll just look at it and, and propose something, and then we're just gonna. Yeah, I think that's great. If we approve it, we'll live with it, I guess. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, anything else on that, Mr. Wilson? No. Okay. All right. We will now move to our public hearing item. We have one item on the agenda. This is a discussion decision um, from our planning department, a proposed amendment to the zone map of approximately 5.38 acres going from RR1 and A20 to R1-8, located approximately 5460 West Old Highway Road in Mountain. Commissioners, nice to meet you. Lance Hassel. I, uh, I uh, last time on our Zoom call, the communication doesn't quite effectively as well as in person, so nice to be here in person. Um, yeah, as you, as you stated, it is um, a matter of rezoning uh, two parcels of property to a, a, to a sm smaller residential use uh, for the property. Um, there's two pieces. Uh, they'd be built for one zone to an R18, uh, smaller residential. Uh, it does fit into the master plan. Um, it lives in harmony with the other areas of the objectives. Um, the, uh, the rezone will not adversely impact the adjacent properties, and there's adequate facilities and services for the property. I heard you last time. There's a number of concerns on traffic and the, uh, the people that had voiced concerns over it. So I ended up uh, hiring a firm, an engineering firm, that did a, a formal study on it, and I think you have copies of it. Copies of it. Um, if not, I, can, I have copies I can distribute if you, if you don't have it. Uh, what it essentially says is, and it had the lot, the design, the, the layout of the property, and would you like me to distribute it? Do you need copies? I, we We've got it in our I sent it to you guys at 405 because oh, it wasn't included in the packet. Oh, I was say, it was I supposed read to. It, yet. it should be in your 405. Yep, he emailed it 405. I, I sent it in to Bailey a, a few after weeks after ago, but it didn't got me. I, I think it was missed. <laughs> but uh, for what it's worth, it, the result, it just went through approximate the volume, um, the trip generation, how much volume would come out of eight lots, given what the road can tolerate. Um, uh, it, and at the end of the day, it did conclude, therefore, roadway can accommodate the project increase of 76 ADT, which is essentially how much would be generated out of eight lots being proposed for that specific plot of land. And that, that seemed to be the larger concern. Um, I, I know traffic is busy, but uh, you know, taking it to one step where you were a, an expert who would actually had a chance to look at it, analyze it, and come back with some th some thoughts on 
the actual flow of traffic. So Lance, do you mind if I just say a couple things? Please. Um, I think all of us were present last time we discussed this. Um, we discussed having a meeting with UDOT, uh, Commissioner and Fackerel, and I sat down with UDOT and discussed with them a couple other items, including this item. We actually discussed the issues that we see between Trapper's Loop Road and, and the on-ramp, so that entire length of the road. We, we know that it's busy. There's a lot of traffic on there. Um, they wanted to postpone it a year. Um, we pushed back and said we don't want it postponed a year. Look at it this year. So they are planning on analyzing that this year. So we, we checked that box off. This is not a county road. It's a state road. But uh, I do appreciate the applicant um, also providing this study. Uh, I want to make sure that um, it's also noted that a uh, two-lane road has, well, this two-lane road has capacity of 19,500, where the current ADT is 9,200. So it's very, um, as much as we like open roads, as much as we don't agree, you know, we, we don't want traffic, this road can take almost double the amount of traffic more than what it has now. So um, I, it, it doesn't appear that he said it would be negligible. He did say, no, it'll produce this many. But really, compared to overall what that two-lane road can take, it's, it's, it's a small amount. But I do appreciate you taking that, the effort to do that. I don't think it's a requirement. But so. Absolutely. Thank you, Jared. It was, I want to make sure that we do this right. I'll say with respect to the A-Trans study, it, it suggests 14 traffic trips a day on average, 8 and 6, morning and afternoon. That's consistent with everything I've heard in terms of average single-family uses in the state of Utah, which is 13 and a half. Um, so that's consistent. I also had the sheriff, I asked, you know, after the last hearing, there was talk of a number of accidents, and this is countywide over two years. We've had 159 accidents with injuries, um, and nine of them came from that section of road. Out of 159? Out of 159. There was also when some... When you say that section, that's from Trapper's Loop to the off-ramp. Off-ramp, yeah. There also was concerned about the lack of enforcement along the highway. And I, I haven't had time to count all of these up, but if you, there's, on each page you can see that there are a number of highlighted, those are all traffic stops by the sheriff's department along that section of the highway. So it is, it is being monitored. I've never been pulled over there. Um, <laughs> But I, I have seen this, the sheriff <laughs> out there, and, and they are pulling people over for speed. The other thing that the sheriff did after I talked to him was that he had, <clears throat> they set out the, the, the trailer. Um, let me get to that. The one that wasn't damaged. And it, it was a, I can't remember what it said on it drive carefully or please drive safely. And that was there for a one week period. What's interesting is the trip count is kind of consistent with what you suggested, although it was closer to 10,000, not the 92. So we are within the range. Um, and that trailer is interesting. It's the stalker roadside log. Um, and it's clear that we leave the county faster than we come into it um, it's because the average speed is 54 going out and 45 coming in um, six, and it's posted at 45 um, and you have to slow down it looks like <laughs> it's yeah they're late for work 59.2 percent of the vehicles were below the speed limit 36.9 were moderately above it, and 3.9% were excessively above the speed limit. So there, there, is, there are occasions where people are flying through there. Um, and so that's, I was just interested in 
based on some of the comments that the public made, kind of where we were at, and I wanted to make sure there was enforcement going on. The, the accidents, they occur all over the county, but there are some that are there, but it doesn't appear to be at an extraordinary rate compared to the other roads in the county. And I'm, I hope UDOT will come back with some mitigation measures, including crosswalks into the... I, I, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't have crosswalks into the park. Um, they're, they're ought to, they ought to be there. We need crosswalks at the intersection of Trapper's Loop and Old Highway. Um, you've got kids that come in and out of the school and head over to the Sinclair for, for you know, to hang out and to get some after school snack or treat or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, they have to negotiate that. And it is a busy road. And I don't you know, at particularly at given times of the day, and I suspect that if we were to set this trailer out during ski season that we would have a higher traffic count because uh, this was in the spring, so, but after the resort had closed. So anyway, just some other information with respect to the traffic concerns that were raised. It's great to have some, some real stats and detail on that, so thank you. Okay. Um, I, I'll bring up just one comment and I'll say this, I guess, knowing that we're not here to discuss layout of your subdivision or your proposed layout, um, but one thing that I would note, because this won't come back, if, if it does move forward, it would not come back before this group being less than 10 lots, it would just go to the Planning Commission. Um, there is a, a stub road in the subdivision to the northwest. We'd love to see this stub out towards that direction, um, or at minimum have a, a right of way for that road. Um, I think we have far too many subdivisions that have been planned not together, and, yeah. and we end up with issues with that. So that's my only comment, and again, that has nothing to do with what we're discussing tonight, but just wanted to make that while I had the opportunity. Understood, and uh, we've talked to this before with the neighbors. So Thank so, you. So Lance, um, I did go down and visit the property since I had the most vocal about this whole thing. I visited the property and along the same issue. It's not right now in um, uh, part of what we were trying to come up with, but that is steep. How are you going to put a road up a steep climb like that? to make more homes on top. Now, if you're going to do it down to the bottom and ask for a different density or anything like that, I'm just bringing this up. You've got a steep, steep hill yeah. to climb up. And I know your neighbor, neighbors both talked to me about it. And I mean, that is steep. And you want, you propose to put homes up above that and you want us to move it out of the A20 zone so that you can do that. I don't see how you're going to do that. Because I know there's some ordinances within the county uh, code that you can. Twenty-five percent incline. Okay, yeah. Yeah. this is not twenty-five percent. Twenty-five percent slope. Slope. Yeah. Slope. Well, slope. it's a twenty-five percent slope. That, that's a great question, Commissioner Fackrell, and one that will have to be addressed at a future yeah, point. Yeah, I'm just telling you, that's something that I observed from down there, and I know that the people, your neighbors, were kind of concerned about that. Yeah. And, I mean, whatever you do, it's yours and the Planning Commission's. Um, but that's just my concerns. And I just, you know. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm just, sorry. No, and that, that's that's right. just, those are my concerns. Okay. And, and, I mean, the other neighbors to the west of you, they went and put the subdivision down low and uh, left the open space up on the hill. So... Yeah, I think we'll have to address it through retaining walls and, and other things that you know, the engineers will, will look at that when it comes to that point. It's going to be a short terrace all the way up. <laughs> okay, any other questions regarding the zoning map amendment? Or, or traffic study regarding that? No. So what are we doing? The I'll make a motion we adjourn public meeting and convene public hearing. Second. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn the public meeting and convene the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay, we are now in public Is hearing. Roll call? Isn't it roll call? Uh, no, 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 okay. no, not for public hearing. Okay. So, Mr. Hassel, if you don't mind, we'll allow you to sit down. We'll allow the public, if, if they so choose, to come up during the public hearing portion of the meeting. Um, once that's ended, we'll go back into our public meeting and, and move forward on the item. Okay. Seeing no public um, comments. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing and reconvene the public meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. We are now back in the public meeting and we'll look for a motion on the zone map amendment. I'll make a motion to approve the Hassel Rezone Map Amendment application number 22.015, changing the zoning district from RR1 and A20 to R18 based on the findings listed in the SAF report dated July 5th, 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve, excuse me, the Zone Map Amendment application number 20-15. Dash zero one five. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I didn't vote. <laughs> are you abstaining or are I, you I'm just trying to decide. <sighs> Work out the details, okay? I'll say a I. Okay, the motion is unanimous and passes. Okay, we will now move to Commissioner Comments. Um, Commissioner Fackrell. Um, just a few things. I'm still, I'm working with Cassell on the things we have within the county that we need to work on. You guys are aware of Nine Springs tomorrow. Uh, AT&T, we're still trying to get coverage throughout the county for everybody so that, that way when we have a fire up in East Canyon, which we had yesterday, which only covered 3,600 square feet, but it could have been very bad because there was no phone service. So, um, so I'm working with that one. Liberty Broadband is actually getting a lot of towers out there now, a lot more. A lot more coverage. Beehive, I have no update on them. They just basically said 10 homes up there in Mountain Green up above the Highlands are not going to get coverage. And uh, so I'm working with them on that, and, let, and Liberty Broadband's trying to get that for them. Um, from Liberty on internet for the fairgrounds? Yes, they're going to get it in. <laughs> Well, so the same. For I've heard that news for a while, but okay. <laughs> I, thought, I, I, that. I, I like to it going How about next week? Before. Yeah, we got to test it. Next week? That'll be wonderful. Okay, because I'll just call him and tell him he has to do it, period. Um, we'll have a disaster. Yeah, if we, if we can't test it, it'll be a mess. Yeah. We've got, we ordered all those iPads to make things easier for them to check yeah, folks. Yeah, it will be there. Tickets and stuff, but without internet, those are... I, I agree. Um, as far as something um, that was brought up in our discussion on in the public comment time, as far as bike lanes go, um, that bike lane that is down by the airport is supposed to be, according to the agreement and according to our uh, let me get his email, or not email, text Josh. from Josh Cook, our new county planner, and he says it is supposed to be It was supposed to be six, wasn't it six feet? Yeah. Six feet, and it's not. It's four feet, if that. 
in certain areas along that. So somewhere or another that needs to be taken care of. I don't know how you can work so, that out. Well, the county doesn't have the right of way width. We don't? No. I thought we owned they that ground. They maximize the right of way width. They, they put that in. They didn't just repair the road. They took it up and resurfaced the entire thing. They didn't just repair the fence. They took it out and replaced the entire fence. I did see the signs, the 10 signs. I'll have to look at exactly what was supposed to be on that. I think it's just restricted access. I don't think there will be a problem with that. The airport. That's right. Yeah, and so that lane comes up, and then it hits the roundabout, and then it connects. Then there's the sidewalk the six-foot sidewalk that's mm -hmm. off of the right-of-way, right. and that takes it up to the the edge of where Silverleaf begins, which I think was part of the Phase 4 plat, but I'm not sure. That may have been part of a prior plat. And then from Silverleaf, it should cross the road, mm -hmm. and when Phase is what were called Phase 6, then it would be on the other side of the road and the trail should go on the, all the way up and connect to the silver leaf trail on that other side of the road so they they have the bike lane path to the point where they have the six foot sidewalk mm -hmm. and then where that ends there should be a crosswalk eventually and a trail that runs on the other side of silver leaf up as those phases develop okay so my question is more down on the airport by the airport that's very very narrow for bicyclists and and it's used frequently bicyclists and uh it walkers hikers time. yeah it's used all the time people in the, i saw i saw mothers with their twins and their kids and everything else walking yeah, up there and then you have bicycles and it's it's not wide enough it's not six feet and if it was we've got painted lines but we don't have six feet and the cars that are going up there um, it's narrowed down, and so I'm just saying that if that is not our property, the airport is not our property, then I can see the problem. It's the same as we have all over the county. Well, the, but what I'm no, saying we own is, the airport. Yeah, I know. So we own the airport. Why can't we get the pavement or the bicycle lane or whatever we need to to go out to the uh, fence or close to the fence? Well, well one is drainage. Okay. <laughs> And the other, we worked with the, the airport manager as to the location of the trail. And I know that the developer proposed even bringing the trail inside of the fence, but the airport didn't want that, and I can understand I can why. I understand that, Because there's the fence. Yeah. yeah. Right. It would well, just be nice. Yeah, it sounds like a discussion we could so. probably have. So I just bring in that in here, but up to your attention so good that, that way we can, we can either mitigate it or go through with other things. Now, also, Brett Heiner came to me and um, requested right now to do a, uh, a bid on some of the hazards that we have on the Cottonwood Creek Trail, that lower end where the mobiles are. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to get a bid for us to see what it would cost for him to do it or somebody else to do it. So he'll be bringing that to us at a later time so we don't have litigation possibil possibility. Because I don't know what's going to happen on the other part we were doing. And so just just for that. Now, the other thing, the last thing I have for now is after being at the fair, the parade yesterday, I would like to propose that we as county commissioners are in the parade to let the people know who we are. Can we so. do a cardboard cutout? No, I didn't. I don't mean in the river. <laughs> I was thinking we could we, maybe we have possibly, done that in the past. I, I think it would be nice for us to all particularly get in we've done it for the fair Newton's parade old truck and go through there or his dad's fire engine. <laughs> but I'd be happy to do that if you wanted to. Come. So just in the past, we have done it for the fair parade. Since it is the Morgan County Fair, that's right. Um, it's been a couple of years. I mean, what? Since we're going to be in the bowl pool, for well, let's just again. have Blaine be our mascot. No, <laughs> no, I think you guys deserve to be there too. Thank you, Commissioner Faco, Commissioner McConnell. <laughs> so the airport, um, the contractor sent a request to Commissioner Anderson and I for help on their extra fuel charges. 
we discussed it previously, but I thought I would bring it up again. They have completed the work there. They did spread the <laughs> piles. It looks better from my perspective. It Although does. It does look better. So did they have a, a written proposal for that, or was it a... No, they just said they change order. There, they love it for a pay it. for it. Gotcha. But I don't know. The, but I guess if you want me to try to work out some resolution with them, I can try to do that. Yeah, I, I don't know if I have any other, <laughs> anything new to add from what I discussed before, but considering it's brought up, uh, I, think it's, I think it's one thing to bid a project and have vendors say this is the cost of an item and you know what you need to do to do the work and then that's your amount. But it's another thing for you to bid a project, a vendor, to say here's the cost of the item and then within the matter of months, um, the vendor, which would be the person supplying the fuel, <laughs> says now it's going to cost you double. And I, I think that's, depending on the situation, hard to force those extra costs on on, on a contractor, I you know, every every cost that I see now, all vendors are saying our price is for what we're showing you today. It can change tomorrow, so that's a very hard um, road to go down when you're starting to say, hey, we, we think this needs to all be on the contractors versus saying, okay, let's let's make sure we're looking at this as the best way possible and knowing. You know, the, the other thing is time with materials. We're having some materials that are out. Um, generators, they're out almost a year um, if we were to order it right now. So I, um, there's something to be said about this, the times that we're in right now and, and how we look at things. I guess that's my comments. I'm not, I'm not saying yay or nay on it, but, man, it's hard to, <coughs> to force these contractors to mid-project mid, um, uh, you now have to pay more money due to a vendor telling you it costs more money, and yeah, sorry, you're going to have to pay for it. So, um, I know UDOT has a um, stipulation in their process where they say if it increases a certain amount and a certain percentage, then then we work through that process with you, and they allow for for that. So, those are my comments. I guess my comment would be, I, I. I just don't like the way it came to us, you know. When I have a situation like that, I would hope that they would come to you and say, look, here's here's our situation, here's where we're at, how can we work this out, what can we work it out, and not just send you a bill for it and just expect you to pay the thing, you know. I don't mind helping them, but I, don't, I personally don't think we just take the full... Yeah, that's more the yeah. second. That's they, what they, they're they saying. They took your approach the second time as yeah, opposed they, to the first. They, they, yeah, that's what they're, they're, they're saying this time similar to what you're saying, Commissioner. So, okay. So, is the question do we bring that back for some more discussion? And maybe, Commissioner or, McConnell, like you mentioned, if we can try and negotiate, um, maybe just not a full here it is, pay for it versus. Let's let's come to a negotiate a price and see see what we can come up with. But is that your? Is yeah, that that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because I can't imagine they didn't have some contingency in there. Right. Okay. I think that's reasonable for yep. sure. That's all I. Have. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just had two items. Number one, just wanted to, to uh, publicly thank the Chamber of Commerce and all those who worked very hard um, yesterday for the 4th of July activities. Uh, there was a great fireworks show and lots of fun activities, um, parade, mm -hmm. river, cardboard regatta, games, etc. So thank you to the Chamber for all your work on that. And those who are listening, maybe take that back to the rest of the Chamber, please. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other item I had is I, I got a call from um, the commander of the local American Legion post. They've historically used the auditorium here in the county building for a yearly meeting um, and have done so free of charge in the past. So she asked me with our current fee schedule what can be done about that. I thought I would bring that back to 
you all for your thoughts. <laughs> Again, it's another one of those situations. We've had a few of them where um, we've made some exceptions. I, I personally uh, certainly support the American Legion and what they do, and I think they, they you know, do good things. So. What percentage of the use of these facilities is by groups that we would even want to charge? It, I, obviously, we only get the exceptions to the policy here. There's, right? there's a lot of people that use it for family get-togethers, okay. for baby blessings and baptisms and things like that. And they should. I mean, it's a cheap facility to yeah. run. Yeah, they yeah. should probably cover that cost. Okay. For I'm public groups, I, I, I feel <laughs> like, you know, it is a public facility, and I think it ought to be used for public things. I agree with charging those who want to use it for personal things or for business-related, but for public groups like that, um, I'm in favor of maybe allowing them to do that. We probably ought to come up with a little better format. And, a policy and or something? I'll try, and figure, I'll try and, and figure it out. And maybe we'll maybe in conjunction with that. Yeah. Are you saying you're going to write a policy? Yeah, with the, right. with the parks and stuff. I'll, it'll, it'll be a very good. rough draft <laughs> but between the two attorneys I think we can get it figured out <laughs> for now let's waive the fee so the foreign legion okay yeah their, yeah, their meeting is the first not the Saturday foreign legion in August. the American <laughs> legion <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got to be local folks <laughs> okay it, but they'll be in soon I'm yeah. fine with that yeah I'm fine with that too okay all right that's all I had Commissioner Anderson um I also want to comment on the the Fourth of July. It was just an amazing. Um, it was just a, the the amount of residents that came, and I, I think even residents outside the county, just an immense amount. I think we're going to need to start um, addressing traffic, um, food. I went over to the for lunch, and man, we we had I think three food trucks there, and the lines were <laughs> extremely long and not in the shade and. So I think there's an opportunity there for food vendors and um, traffic coming off the freeway. They were back to clear up the freeway. So I, I think um, as this continues to grow, we just need to make sure we're accommodating for that because I think it's just going to keep growing. The fireworks show, I sat on my back porch and watched the whole thing, and it was an amazing fireworks show. So real, really enjoyed that. And I um, want to also publicly thank the Morgan Chamber of Commerce. Um, master plan for the I guess we're, I think we're calling it a uh, park a fairground park I believe is what we're calling it um, well I checked with Brett today with I believe within about two weeks we're supposed to have that restroom facility completed and up and open for use and that's been a long time coming um, but the master plan park we're going to try and find some dates next week that I'll send out to you guys where they're going to give us a a start of a concept drawing and something we can start to look at and figure out what we uh, after we had the meeting like oh, i think the meeting was about a month ago or a month and a half ago so yeah that's updates i've got so they're speaking of the facilities over at the pickleball courts the power is now there so there is lighting for those who like to stay up late and play pickleball um, and the water is run and ready to go for the restroom so yep. that's, that's great news on our way and i think our rec department is going to try and Put something together for, for the ball tournament. It's great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so, what's that going to be at the pickleball court? You're going like to do a do a tournament or even a league or well, league of. So, I understood that we need four courts or whatever it is for the pickleball to have. But a just tournament. a local tournament. Yeah, I'm this not is just bringing well, in. Well, I think she's thinking of doing a rec league. Yeah, you know, she's thinking of because we have a facility. Let's use, let's use it. Let's sign people up and actually have them using it. But, but maybe a couple's a thing or right. something like that. Well, I think it's a great idea. Just for some entertainment and Need something to get my arm back. And I think not only the chamber, but all the people that uh, donate to to that cause. You know, the the trash and all all the I know. I mean, that's the only thing they asked me to do was make sure that, see if I could get a, a free receptacle from Aero Disposal brought us up one. And, and did. It's great. And they, I mean, people are good. Yeah. People are, so I appreciate that because that helps a lot. Thanks. Commissioner Wilson, do you have anything no, else? No, nothing else. 
Okay. Well, thank you, commissioners, for your time. Thank you to the public for sticking with us. It's a fairly short meeting. We appreciate it. Do we have a motion? Executive. Why don't you go ahead and make that motion? I'd be glad to. I move that we go into closed session to discuss potential litigation and to discuss competency of an individual. Character and professional yeah, competency of an character. individual. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. second. A motion, a second. This will be a roll call vote. Commissioner Fackrell? Aye. Commissioner McConnell? Aye. I vote aye. Commissioner Anderson? Aye. And Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Okay, motion passes. We will move into an executive session following which uh, we will return to our meeting um, and then 